Lace up those boots and stretch those glutes. It's time for the Wrestling Compadres with your hosts, Dale Rutledge, Scott Narva and Jake Lloyd. Welcome back to another episode of Wrestling Quarren Padres. Uh, Jake here along with Scott and Dale. And a very special thank you to our official compadres announcer, Carol Baskin's ex-husband, live from South America. Uh, so kind of you to phone in for us. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, big fan. Big fan of the show he is. Yeah, I love an, R- an ROH. It's great. <laughs> Have you guys? Did you guys do the Tiger King binge like the rest of the world? No. You didn't. Oh shit! Uh, what about you, Dale? I saw one episode. I think. Oh boy, Alexandra and I binged the whole thing in a day while I was doing busy work. And I'll tell you what: uh, it makes those new or those recent photos of Taker and Michelle McCool at this guy, uh, fucking Doc Antley, whatever the fuck his name is, his uh his place a lot less uh, uh okay, a lot less innocent. So essentially the place that they went to, since you guys didn't see this, the place that they took those pictures at recently, um, that guy is like a legit cult leader, predator. He fucking abuses women. He's a total scumbag piece of shit. And uh, yeah, Taker's uh, posing with his uh, with his kitties. I'm not sure if you noticed, but when they did the big recap this week on Raw, where they showed all the shit that AJ had done, they cut out him showing those photos. And I am 100% certain that was by design. Hmm. So you're telling me Prince Puma from Lucha Underground is now the Tiger King? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I believe that's how that works. It's either him or Lince Dorado. They have to fight it out. Mm. Whichever one loses, they take away in a minivan. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, anyways, once as I did mention up front, uh, we are once again a three-way call here. No two of us are in the same place. I'm in Burbank, Dale's uh, usual on the East Coast in D.C., and Scott is uh, down, I always forget where you live, Ir- Irvine now? You live in Irvine now, right? Just forget it, will you? Great. Don't Perfect. ever stop So by. the reason I say that is to get a big disclaimer <laughs> and uh, up ahead if there's like weird, awkward pauses. I got a couple people that wrote me last week that were like, are you guys okay? It sounded like nobody could hear each other. And I was like, yeah, that's because we're all talking at the exact same time on a phone call delayed. So just excuse any of that in this episode. This is going to be a weird couple of weeks while we work our way through this and try to figure out how to make these calls as uh, as pleasant as possible for everybody. But uh, yeah, guys, I can't see your mouth move. I, I, I can't keep a normal conversation. I can't see your mouth is moving. We need we do need to switch to that video like we talked about years ago so that we can uh, uh, like keep, put a hand up. So we, like we know when somebody it's kind of, we, just, we have like a virtual talking stick that we pass around the classroom. Or just give rude gestures when we uh, disagree with someone. Right. Well, I just assume that. That's <laughs> Why is Scotty we're... always flicking us off? <laughs> he doesn't. He's going to have a cramp I... in his middle finger by the time the show is over. If he were to do that, <laughs> I'll just sever it and put it on the table. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, it's a despite, good workout. despite the fact that we're uh, not leaving our houses and all trying to get through this, uh, probably with a little physical contact, the wrestling world still continues despite uh itself i suppose um but there's plenty of us uh, plenty of stuff for us to talk about this week uh without further ado let's get on with the show let's get into slam cast news total bellas is back tonight guys aren't you excited for the debut of total bellas i want to see the bellas bellies Wait, the Bella Bellies? I don't think you can say that in 2020. The Bella Bellies? Um, no, that wasn't even there. I want to see John Laurinaitis around any doctor who's studying COVID-19 and not be whisked away. <laughs> What's the problem? Oh, what's this thing going around? Uh, so he's sick or something? I'm totally fine, <laughs> I swear. No, this is natural. <laughs> um anyways now that scott and i don't have voices um wwe launches wrestlemania merchandise um the first ever i wasn't there merchandise for wrestlemania uh this got a chuckle out of me when i saw it 
the first time. Don't know that I would buy one of these shirts, but I suppose it's an interesting time in history. It is, uh, you know, probably a first and last for this sort of thing. So I thought this was a fun thing that they did. I feel like the roster could wear it and it would be accurate. <laughs> no. Oh. What are you kidding me? There's fucking 9,000 matches. I think the roster. Yeah. And fun. they employ 30,000 wrestlers. So, I mean. All right. That's fair. I do have quite a quite a quite a lot of I, I, I definitely meant it would. Uh, I don't I wasn't planning on getting a T-shirt because I'm thinking about paying my rent. But if I were to get a T-shirt, I would probably get this one because it definitely got a good laugh out of me. And yes, hopefully this is just a uh, thing we can look back on and be like, that crazy time. That was weird. Via- yeah, That was weird. This is strange because when you buy the shirts that say, I was there, you're part of a select few. The, I mean, these are shirts like no one was there. So it doesn't. To say, like, I wasn't there, like, yeah, well, n- nobody was. So right. <laughs> your, your shirt is not special. Sure. You're, so you're, we, you're we, in the largest possible club. That's what you are. Yeah. So what, what you're saying is we have to buy one for all of our friends and our families. That's right. I also need to go buy one for every other WrestleMania. Because <laughs> I also right. wasn't Yeah, I wasn't those. at any of these. Yeah, they need to make WrestleMania still haven't been there shirts for people who have just never gone. Didn't even watch this one on pay-per-view. <laughs> um, well, you know who else uh, is going to be sporting one of those shirts? Roman Reigns. Uh, Roman Reigns announced on Twitter that amid some uh, mid COVID-19 fears and his uh, um, compromised immune system that he's pulling out of his title match against Goldberg at WrestleMania. And I don't blame him at all. Uh, This is great. He should. Um, WWE, on the other hand, has played this. uh, Something I've noticed about their programming is that they are just keeping everything kayfabe. Like they haven't been like, well, you know, coronavirus is out there and this is happening. They're just like rolling with the punches. They've still advertised him in fact uh to when this episode comes out tomorrow uh smackdown will happen and apparently they're supposed to have a face to face um so they're still advertising this match to happen so i assume that something is going to happen at smackdown and to go home that will take roman out of it kayfabe um with a reason in the storyline versus just well he doesn't want to be there because it's scary but I think the problem is, didn't they pre-tape a lot of things for, for these most recent episodes? So maybe they, they have to play through it until they were able to fix it that's, and we just haven't gotten there yet? Th- that's my thought. My, that's my thought is that like the reason why they didn't speak about it last Friday, because it was already known last Friday, the last SmackDown and Monday, obviously, that followed. I think, I think we are going to get a live segment or a segment that they have taped since last Thursday, which is when he announced it. Um, then that will be included on tonight's Smack or, you know, this week's SmackDown, whatever day you're listening to this. Gotcha. That's my guess. I'm just glad fans finally have a reason again to boo Roman Reigns. Wow. Won't even fight Goldberg, huh, pussy? Boo. (laughs) And the sad part is, is that Goldberg is probably at just as much risk. He is not a young man. I guess so. I mean... The, there's no way that anyone could blame Roman for this. So if, no, if anybody shouldn't be doing the ridiculous, they, they probably shouldn't be wrestling overall as far as, you know, stay home, stay safe measures are going for a lot of these States. Now it's like, you know, your job isn't essential. So uh, it, it's oh. good that they're able to do what they do, but I can't blame anyone who is unable to, I don't, I don't understand why, you know what? Anybody would give any grief. Since you mentioned that, let's talk about this. It's not on the docket, but whatever. We're winging it. It's WrestleMania week. Um, Florida finally enacted a stay at home like other states. Uh-huh. This is the first. Uh-huh. And up until this point, it only happened, I think, this Monday. It's just a couple of days from us recording this. I don't know how this is going to affect because both AEW and WWE tape everything in Florida right now. And the question is going no, to be. That's not no? true. I thought AEW a- no. was in a different state. I thought they were in Jacksonville. Yeah, they were. No, that was two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Oh, I thought they've been there. I didn't realize that they've... I thought that they went to Jacksonville and they've just stayed there because it's the, you know, the con compound. No, this past week was Georgia. Or, oh, uh, sorry, yesterday was Georgia. 
So they've been bouncing around. They've been bouncing around basically wherever they can do stuff. But I think last night they recorded more things. Um, but yeah, they've been bouncing around. So they're also doing pre-tape stuff. Sure. Yeah. Gotcha. But I anyways, mean, obviously with all their segments and stuff too. Yeah, I just don't know. I'm curious to how the new Florida uh, uh, increased shutdown is going to also apparently affect Mania because, I, I, you know, I doubt WWE is essential. As if they're just pretty much closing non-essential business, then uh, I'm I'm certain that WWE is not essential in the eyes of Florida. I'm yeah, sure they'll I pull would, out some really strange. It's like we're not a business; we're a show. Yeah. So, and there's no people. So you leave us alone. We're just meeting in a room. Now take your shirts off, guys, and wrestle. <laughs> the first rule of fake fight club is you don't talk about fake fight club. <laughs> right. Leave the governor out of it. I had, I had read something online that they have already recorded the, you know, raw after and NXT after, you know, I don't know a hundred percent of that being true, but, um, if if that was the case, if they got through that and then had to figure something else out, that's. I mean, I I, I don't know what's Connecticut like. I mean, where what are where are their options? They're going to have to take a break at some point if if everything is on a lockdown. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I guess they could you know go to their their headquarters and do some stuff in some studios here and there. But it, yeah, mm-hmm. in, in large part, like I don't know, and it, clearly they've been doing. I feel like tests in a way with running manias on ESPN and doing stuff other places and seeing if people are going to tune in and watch. Uh, so mm-hmm. I, they're not, I feel like they're not hard up for content. That's the weird part where it's like mania just feels so weird. You're doing three shows a week. That's six hours of television. We're good. You can hold off on the really gigantic stuff till later and there's more of a build, but nope. Everybody else did. They moved the Olympics. You can't move WrestleMania. They moved the entire Olympics. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know. It just seems crazy to me. I, I will defend yeah. it in the sense that like w- the stories are going to happen regardless. Like the show is going to air every week unless they legitimately just put everything creative on pause. Like the shit's going to happen. I'm not saying we need two fucking nights of 75 matches, but what I'm getting at is like, this is what my idea was just to take whatever the stories were building the mania and just start doing them on the main show and having them culminate uh, there. Um, But like the idea of postponing or just like changing the schedule, I understand why they wouldn't do that because their year is going to continue and they still want SummerSlam to go on when it's going to go on. They still want next year's Survivor Series to go on and then, you know, so forth and so on. Like the schedule is going to continue. For me, it's just a matter of like, I don't know. I feel like this was, it was easier enough to either uh, cancel or just do this in a way that wasn't giving us like this faux pas mania. I don't know. It's all very weird. They have like four matches that need to happen in Mania. All the rest right. are like, whatever. The, the, yes. It can happen now or later. It doesn't matter because most of these matches were made within a, a week or two ago. Exactly. That's 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 the point that I'm saying is like, there's the, let the stories that are already there just play out however you want to let them play out. Sure. If you want to give us a Mania like you're doing, then that's fine. And I'm, I'm not poo-pooing it until I see it. Like, I feel like there's so many people on Ryan right now that is like, oh, fuck, Mania's going to be so stupid. And I'm like, well, I, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Maybe you have a very good reason to not be uh, wildly excited about what your expectations are. And I, I think what we saw between fucking Corbin and Elias, if that's a sign of things to come, then we're not in good shape. But also, hey, that uh, Drew McIntyre promo was pretty badass. Maybe we'll get more stuff like that. Maybe that's going to be part of Mania. So I don't know. I'm going to kind of withhold judgment, obviously, until I see it. But uh, in any case, yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a weird time for Mania. And uh, back to the point at hand. Uh, you know, no judgment on Roman for pulling out at all whatsoever. And in fact, I just sort of feel bad for him because it definitely felt like a Roman win to me. It feels like this was, you know, Goldberg mm-hmm. came by for mania and put the strap on him and just for him to give it to Roman. So now I kind of just feel bad because now it's like, well, now we have to figure out what to do with the story from here. I don't. He should get fucking paid and you're not going to get paid with zero people in the crowd. So... <laughs> Stay home. Sure. Wait for sure. this shit to turn around. Be in front of a crowd. Win the title. Great. Sure. That's that's fair. Um. Well, our last little piece of uh, news here comes from Impact Wrestling, a uh, show that we cover constantly on this program. Uh. But Kylie Ray signs a long term contract with Impact Wrestling. 
uh, Kylie Ray, uh, the uh, and now I'm going to get yelled at because I'm not I haven't kept up the former NWA women's champion. She lost her title to Thunder Rosa correctly. Correct. Jesus Christ. No, you should have. You should have just stopped when you knew you were going to get everything wrong. Okay. Uh, Kylie Ray uh, was one of the first ladies in uh, uh, AEW. And was involved in like one of the first shows and then had left the company. And there's a lot of speculation as to why. And she was bouncing around. She's like, no, things are good. Things are good between me and Tony Khan. And that's why it's kind of baffling to hear a year later. She's like, I'm with Impact Wrestling. Like, okay. Uh, I can't imagine they matched a price, but sure. You go right ahead. So that's one of the more baffling things that I've heard in a long time in wrestling news. Got it. So I think she has coronavirus in the brain. Great. Kylie Ray is the one with the yellow smiley face shirt. Now, there's Kylie Ray, there's Kay, Kaylee Ray, there's Kylie Roy, there's, I get them all confused. Candice LeRae. <laughs> there's too many. There's there's Bay Lay. Summer Ray. There's Adam Cole, Bay Bay. Winter Ray, Fall Ray. There's all the season rays. Keith Lay. Oh, boy. Slamcast News. Oh, the best part of wrestling this week for me uh, was AEW Dynamite. Um, we saw the Wednesday Night Wars continue this week with on one side we had Sam Roberts on NXT and this side we had uh, Pharaoh uh, joining in on commentary briefly. The, the <laughs> Cody Rhodes dog. Um, Which had man, a lot I, of color I, commentary. I thought the show uh, to say as well. was fun from start to finish. My, my, really favorite, my favorite about Pharaoh was Alexandra watching her realize that that is the dog on the nightmare shirt that I recently got for my cousin, for my birthday, mm-hmm. like the, the medical salad and like putting that together was uh, that was enjoyable for me to watch her do. She was like, Pharaoh is my favorite member of this family. I was like, all right, well, there you go. <laughs> it was a big hit amongst uh, the gals too. When watching, I go, look, there's a dog. They go, Oh, a doggy. <laughs> uh, this show's great. Yeah. <laughs> Humans are very simple creatures. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Um, uh, but yeah, but a, lot man, of, a lot of highlights from the show, in my opinion. But I, one of the ones, obviously, Jake, Jake Snake Roberts promo leading into the debut of Lance Archer, um, mm-hmm. I thought was all around solid. Like Jake setting the scene, more stuff going into Cody. And then we get to see Lance debut before the tournament that will crown the uh, new uh, TNT champion that we see Lance Archer fight Marco Stunt in a one of the better debut squash matches I've seen in a long time. Holy shit, was it hilarious and brutal. Oh my gosh, I loved this match. Like, what a fun way to come into the company. I mean, first to get Jake to to do his thing for you and then to just come in and have, yeah, I just, just an entertaining way to totally decimate someone. <laughs> Um, I, I really loved it. I was, I was shocked how fun that was without an audience. Well, yeah. I, well, uh, some semblance of an audience cause they put some more wrestlers out there again. That, yeah, that to That's me, that true. to me saves the show. It was so much fun. It's a hundred times better, um, with even just a few people at ringside and when their talent, it, beca- there, there's intrigue cause you kind of want to see how they react to things. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and they feed off of each other, like the talent in the ring, putting on a show feed off of their, you know, uh, their coworkers out at ringside for me. Oh my God. I mean, I've always loved Trent Beretta, Trent question mark, whatever the fuck you want to call him these days, Trent and Omega, by the way, dressed like they were a tag team. Um, but, uh, this was a brawl that I did not expect. This was fantastic. They took, they went the time limit bare, like essentially, um, and uh, Omega squeezes out a victory right at the end. The story being told of like, wow, what would this do for Trent if he beats, you know, the number four ranked guy? And then mm-hmm. think, and then and then like the commentary switching to like, oh, he's gonna beat him to, wow, Trent just needs to go the time limit. Like if Trent goes the time limit, that's great for him. Trent is such a star, and I've thought so if, since he was in freaking WWE, since he was in the shitty ECW version of WWE on Tuesday nights. And uh, man, him and Drew McIntyre years ago was was, was great. And, uh, you know, I'm glad now that he's being uh, shown what he can do, that he's being put on this pedestal, which I think is uh, 
is going to be great for him and not that great for Chuck Taylor. Was there, I, was I, there a storyline reason why he lost his last name? Or has um, he just been I, Trent since he's I, been in the best friend? I think he did that in the indies. I think he sort of just dropped it to just Trent with the question mark. Yeah, because in New Japan, he didn't have Beretta, correct? Yeah, I don't... No, he I, did. Oh, did he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it might... wasn't just Trent. It might just be a, a... I mean, I think I've heard them say Trent Beretta on AEW. Maybe it's not been written down, That's but I've definitely JR. heard the word. Like, I've heard them say it, so... Maybe it's just one of those things where JR you know, says it. You know. um, but I, I, I still hope that Trent unlocks the next part of his character because I enjoy his wrestling, but there's still just something where I can't latch on to him uh, as someone that I want to root for or someone I want to boo or anything. It's just like, yeah, you're a guy. I mean, I'm booing that you're affiliated with Chuck Taylor and you call him your best friend when Orange Cassidy's right there. Um <laughs> But I want, I hope that whatever that is, like, unlocks soon because I think there is more potential for Trent, but it's just not there yet. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I feel the same way about about both those guys. Honestly, him and Chuck Taylor, I haven't, I, I don't have a, di- I have a distaste for Chuck Taylor just overall, I guess. But Trent, <laughs> I just don't, I don't have a a connection to. Um, but yeah. I've I've kind of always felt that way about him though that he was great in the ring and I just haven't as as many places I've seen him wrestle I don't feel like I've ever gotten to know what his character truly is. Yeah, it's true. I think that his character he's one of those people who he does his best character work on like Twitter and like social media is sort of kind of how you get to know mm-hmm. him. But when you think about it or when I think about it specifically like I realize yeah on on AEW television, he's mostly just been a side character for the fun stuff that Orange Cassidy's doing. And uh, he doesn't really have much of his own uh, to grasp onto there. Yeah, and that's some, it's like the, you know, the pretty valets back in the Attitude Era where it's, right. you're going to get shown up by by the manager. You're going to get shown up by this other attraction. So right. I hope he does unlock it because it's like, hey man, Orange Cassidy's going to get all that TV time and they're going to pass you by. I, you know, it is it's it's one of those things where as as much as I want to tout how incredible this match was and how great the commentary that was Cody was on commentary for that match and having everybody at ringside, it was it was fantastic. But it, it is one of those things where you just go like, shit, imagine how much more Trent would have connected with the audience had there been an audience for this exact match. If it went exactly the way it did, if it got a brutal as it did, they went to the outside that that like pillar power bomb that. Omega did to him. There was some great, great spots in there. And uh, it just makes you wonder like, ah, crap, like this might've even been, been even better for Trent to make that connection with the audience. Um, if they were there to see it. Maybe I, I still think he just needs the other part about it. Like, I, I think you'll always get a reaction when wrestling, but then once he walks away, once he walks back through the curtain, then it's like, he's forgotten. Kenny Omega is not forgotten. You remember Kenny Omega. You remember Moxley. You remember, fuck, you remember Lance Archer after his debut. Sure. Like, Trent needs another thing. What it is, that's his journey. Eh? And so, uh, but someone who I don't think needs a thing uh, is uh, is uh, Mr. Brody. Sorry, Mr. fucking Brody. Brody Lee's <laughs> promo in the back, uh, pre-tape, where he's talking to members of the Dark Order was another... <laughs> Uh, you know, Vince esque, uh, a segment, right. and I fucking love these so much. And I'm sure I'm biased as fuck, but goddamn, they are so fun. <laughs> yelling at a member of the Dark Order for yawning. For the yawning is the one that is the one that yawned. The same one that he uh, power bombed in the in the ring. Maybe I. I mean, it was unclear when they just labeled them as eight eight and nine, which I thought was kind of fun that they don't get identities. Right. They they should put, <laughs> yeah. they should sew little numbers onto their masks so that we could, yes. so that we could, we can identify like, Oh yeah, there he is. Yeah. There definitely should be some indication of like, we know that that's that one, but then again, maybe they're like, well, we're not going to keep you. So you'll never be eight again. <laughs> right. But I hope they, they do start formulating some numbers because i think that's pretty cool yeah acknowledging it's like yeah we have evil uno he's fucking number one number one exactly and what's fun about that too is that you can uh, uh you can actually create a character with a number like if we know if we if as time goes on we know to expect 
that like, you know, number six is kind of funny or number, you know, number yeah. number four is that big, tall, scary guy like that kind of shit. That's uh, that's really fun. And then eventually when they turn like you can make stars out of that, like you can make a star out of like some like n- build number seven as like this fun guy that all of a sudden the audience starts drawing to for some reason. Then eventually he unmasks and it's the debut of somebody fun with a cat with a name. Like there's so many ways you can go with this. Like I think the dark mm-hmm. order, the dark order went from being like the biggest misstep when the company began to being now one of the f- most like fascinating things they've got. I I cannot agree with you more. It is. It, they've it done a 180 with this whole thing. Right. And it's been great. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, we also got the debut of uh, a new uh, female superstar uh, wrestler. I guess superstar is not really what AEW does. Um, but I, I want to know more about this Anna J, though, because she wears bow ties. What do you say? She wears bow ties. Yes, like she that. does. I liked everything about her. I feel like she was yeah, she she debuted good. against the number one. She didn't get they didn't make it a squash match. They didn't make it, you know, like a oh okay here's here's just a way to showcase our number one, uh you know our our, our number one contender against some new talent. They like gave her a fighting chance. They gave her a couple of good spots. They and also it's clear that she's uh she's from the their training camp, the Nightmare Factory, which Cody was putting over and like talking about uh being trained by QT Marshall and all that kind of stuff. But uh yeah, she's got a great look. She's super cute. She moves well. I'm, I'm I, in a in a division that I think is sort of hurting right now. Uh man, get, make make her a character. Let's see how good she is. Let's see if she can talk. Introduce me to her. Feels like somebody got starstruck. That's what I was saying. <laughs> got booty struck. <laughs> I was I was really surprised how Sheeta was able to power slam her because Anna J is not tiny no. um, and she's not overweight at all by any means, but she's significantly bigger uh, than, than Sheeta. And Sheeta doesn't look like she's able to do these power moves, but she did it. And I was like, shit, Sheeta impressed me even more. So it, it was, it was great on both. Yeah, this was a, it was a really great debut for her. And uh, also we've talked about this over the past few weeks that we've had these, shows without a the real crowd and how it's just got to be so much harder to wrestle it's got to be so much harder without that feeding off without hearing the reactions it's got to be harder to pace it's got to be harder just to do your job and and keep it serious and perform and be that performer and to have your debut in this in this setting and scenario um i hope that aw is thrilled with what she did well i think and this goes for later too with nxt uh when we get there but i think that it could be the other way around as well, where these people are getting the chance because it's like this. True. So as as odd as it may be, I mean, you're just practicing in an empty ring most of the time anyway, unless you're not, you know, you're not on TV. Right. So it, it, it probably, it probably, it, maybe it's a better way because you can get those, uh, you know, shakes out. Yeah. And a, and a one without, without, and you get your debut over and, and, you know, you're on the up and up. So I don't know. I, I, I kind of, it seems at least that a lot of new people are, are getting a, a, opportunity this week because of the circumstance true 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 um uh, what else did we get we got uh uh chris jericho's t- somewhat tiger kingy <laughs> i guess uh moment with <laughs> vanguard why is it tiger kingy he's been doing this for a while no no in the I, hot tub and he, drinking i think he just threw a few references for the sake of our enjoyment in there Oh, Again, so brilliant. The dude is playing off of like the social consciousness in a way that's so good. Yeah, I, every every single thing that he touches just turns into gold. Like he, it's never a misstep with Jericho. I've never seen a segment since he's been on AEW where I go, eh, boy, that didn't really hit. Uh, yeah, it still kills me using the line "pumpkin headed dipshit," which we'll get to Kevin Owens later and points off for you, sir. Um, and releasing the hounds. Oh my God. And then those hounds were so miniature and it's so the, funny. The little guy on the stoop that wasn't even running, just a little tiny guy <laughs> barking, <laughs> fucking adorable. Just barking and going the other way, basically. Yeah. That's pretty much, uh, that would have been, that would have been campfire right there. It'd have been like, ah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I'm going to go over here. 
Do you think <laughs> you think whiskey yeah. would have caught, caught Vanguard? Oh God, no! Like w- if I if I like dust loudly, whiskey is like hiding in a closet somewhere. Right. Yeah, that's that's campfire. That vacuum comes out, and he's like, "Booking out of here." <laughs> yeah, it's like a super villain. <laughs> well, I mean, in fairness, uh, he did have a T-shirt hanging from him, so maybe that would have been a good lore for the dog. It would have been like, "Oh, I want to bite this giant toy," but I don't, I don't know that that would have been enough of a lore to. I mean, we've heard that Vanguard Override in the arena. That, that shit is loud. Uh huh. Like everything about it was just so enjoyable, and I think. What I love so much is they've set the tone for anything for with a fucking phone that they can make these wonderful segments where they let a wrestler go and just do a thing and it's entertaining television. So if we get shutdowns galore and we can't be in a ring, I feel like AEW is still going to deliver on segments like this. Right. Yeah. What a perfect time to pick up Matt Hardy. I mean, if, if, if ever it was already going to be a boon, but now it just, it just feels so perfect for this particular moment in history. And I, I hope they have a lot of fun with it because, uh, it's, it's, it it couldn't be now. And like we were saying about what was that on the pre-show about how wrestling feels, um, nowadays it, it, it's still kind of a constant reminder of how times are. I, these segments are not that at all. They are definitely just the perfect, um, subtraction from reality <laughs> it's it with AEW. uh I, I i look forward to watching it i try and watch it as soon as possible as i can on wednesday nights i enjoy it i end up rewinding stuff i love the matches i love the feel every like there's only one other show 205 live is seriously the only other show that gets the feel i wish there were more at stake with these matches but AEW is like giving me everything that i desire with a wrestling show right now and for something fun and uh, like even when it came to the John Moxley and Jake Hager video package where when it starts, I go like, oh, OK, oh, it's just a recap. And I'm watching and going, oh, no, this is new footage. This is new interviews. This is done in a different way. This is catching the guys and doing a one on one confessional and talking like and I thoroughly dug it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I wish I was I cared a little bit more about this. I just don't think that I, uh, I don't know there's just something about Hagar that I'm just not super interested in. He's like my least interested thing in the, uh, the inner circle. Um, uh, and also I liked it when he wasn't talking, <laughs> but I guess you can't really build a match like that when the guy is just not saying anything. Well, but I, I look at these as being a little different. Like I thought that initially too, I'm like, Oh, well he used to not talk, but this is a, this is a fighter documentary. Like this is talking about your opponent as opposed to doing promos and stuff like that. Like, and he would occasionally like Jericho made him say a thing here and there, but I like that. I like the, tell us about what it's going to be like to fight John Moxley and tell us about your MMA career. Right. Yeah. And this of course was to set up the, uh, their empty arena brawl, uh, in two weeks for the, uh, the AEW world title and, uh, Moxley pretty much saying, Hey, I'm not, uh, I don't want to stand a ovation from a crowd. I just want to beat him in a fight. Well, it's a good thing because there's not going to be a crowd there. So that'll work that really well for John Moxley. And I love what Jericho's saying too with the the inner circle doesn't fight. I welcome Jake Hager getting the championship and I'll support him. I think that's yeah, such a unique take in wrestling factions. Interviewing Sammy and, uh, you know, being like, yeah, we're all champion. I mean... Hey, dude, don't say it's completely unique because New Day was all about like, you know, hey, what any one of us wins, we all win. So that it's existed out there in the past. But uh, especially for a heel faction, that's what I like about it. I thought this well, yeah. was better work. So uh, I thought this was better work for Moxley, too. I, I feel like he felt more believable during this package than I had felt uh, about him on a live mic lately. Interesting. Uh, well, we also got a uh, main event tag match with Darby Allen and uh, Cody Rhodes against Sammy Guevara and Sean Spears. And uh, uh, they're all freaks. Every one of them. Uh, Darby Allen is insane. There were some really fun spots with the people. I, I love that you we got to see all of the talent outside of the ring for the entire match. And then they also got to get involved, like, I'm sorry, for the whole evening. And then they also got to get involved and beat uh, people up with high heel shoes. 
<laughs> this was this was a ton of fun. Yeah, and it was it was I thought it was a smart way of also setting up the uh the the TNT title tournament um with these competitors and it didn't feel like this has been overdone. Like um, you know, if we're gonna get qualifiers for sometimes stuff in WWE where it's like, yeah, we, f- we feel like they fought a bunch already and we get Sean Spears getting the win. Who's been uh, kind of in the back for a while now, either being on sidelines cheering or they carried on with the gambling from a few weeks ago between him and Sammy Guevara in ring during the action. And um, that he's been looking for a tag team partner, but now he gets the win. So now he's, he has some credibility going into this tournament as being a threat. Yeah, and uh, and like a surprise win that led to uh, a really great moment with the implosion of uh, um, uh, uh, Darby Allen and Cody mm-hmm. taking a taking a pot shot at, at at Cody, which is it's fun because Cody didn't lose the match really, <laughs> um, but you know Darby's very emotional. Yeah, okay. Well, Cody's just you know he's chipper, and I don't think Darby Allen likes chipper. <laughs> um, he, he actually took some of uh took some of his bleach backstage and it was just it was just a whole <laughs> unraveling from there <laughs> oh no bleach wars 2020 um mm-hmm. who remind me i Bash i the bleach I, I completely forget remind me who cody faced last week was it kip no who did he face last week cody do you remember scott uh Cody in a match. It was the opening. I, last thinking, week I tried to help. I want to say it was the opening match. God, I, I can't remember who we faced last week. It's driving me crazy. I'll look it up. I'll, I'll look it up. Because, yeah, I remember the so, post-match that he was talking about. Uh, what's nuts? Um, it, I, The murder hawk. Right. I want to say it might have been Kip. I don't remember. The reason I bring it up is because last week, I mentioned that whoever it was that took that move, that took the crossroads, had made it look better than it has looked in years. And then... And then Sammy showed up. Who was it? Sammy Guevara, then this week oh, is yes. what I was and acknowledging. Then, yes, yes. And then Sammy Guevara went, oh, okay, I'm going to one-up you. Holy shit, this is how you take that crossroads. That crossroads looks... So good when it's taken like this weird inverted DDT instead of just this sort of like, I don't know, this like flipping over and falling on your side, weird side bump that people have been taking it for years. God, I wish I remember who last that was. Last week was Jimmy Havoc. Who was Jimmy it last? Havoc last week? Jimmy Havoc last week. That's who it was. Jimmy Havoc took it so well this week. I'm sorry, last week. And then Sammy Guevara went, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. I'm going to go. I'm going to do that crazy. I hope everybody is watching this and I hope that Cody likes it. And tells everybody, hey, look at how they're doing it. This is how you should you should take that. Because it was so violent looking. It looks so brutal. And Guevara is just like a freak, one of those freak of nature talents who just ragdolls really well anyway. And this just looked fucking brutal. Of course you got to take your boss's finisher the best possible oh. so you can fight your boss again. Right, right. <laughs> good point. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of Jimmy Havoc, I love I love him at ringside. He's one of my favorite people to see out there, and I love um, during that uh, that that match where he offered <laughs> the wrench, and he's just like, "Take the wrench!" And they're like, "Come on, no, don't don't t- put that away." Like other that, he just carries it around with him, you know, in case they need to offer somebody a wrench. Yeah, he's he's th- thinking like the old '90s wrestling video games, where it's like everybody right. uh, has a weapon in the crowd. <laughs> I. I also enjoyed, uh, I, I think it was Kip Sabian's yawn sign. Oh, yes. That was just very fun for. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed like, uh, Orange Cassidy's sign. Went for Cody? What did his say? I don't remember. Orange Cassidy had a sign that had nothing on it. <laughs> it was a blank sign <laughs> nice. for, for when Cody yeah. Rhodes came out. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. Um. Anyways, yeah, a- AW was super fun. I really think that they've. They're doing the best with this scenario than anybody right now. And I think a lot of that is putting those talent on the outside because it still gives you a sense of that live show. It gives you that atmosphere. And I think that is everything. That's absolutely everything in between the bells. It's it's creating all of those fun moments, not just in between the bells, but even 
during entrances. Like we just mentioned, like when he, when Cody walks around and he goes to kiss Brandy, but he throws a kiss at Trent beforehand. Like all of these fun moments where you're getting to see people interact. You're getting to see, uh, you know, some comedy, some drama. You're getting to see all the things that you watch pro wrestling for. Even without a regular audience, you're getting that. And uh, I think it's the right way to do it right now. And man, WWE would take a would be smart to take a take a look at that and be like, you know what? Let's throw some talent out there or just anything. Throw some people out there. Whoever you can, whoever you're allowed to throw out there, put them out there. Because I think that that right now is to me the 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 biggest thing that's making these shows more enjoyable. It's a show. It feels like a show. It feels yep. like there's performance from performers with stakes. So it's important yep. to watch. And I, 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 I agree. Um, favorite moment of the show, gents. What would you say? Um, mm. I mean the the Vanguard segment. I, I mean, how could you like anything more than that? I feel. Um, I'm gonna. You know, I'm just gonna go with Trent versus Omega because I. I get everybody's, uh, you know, like they are not quite attached to Trent yet. I don't know if it's just the Long Islandness, um, or the fact that I've just loved him for so long. I've been a fan for so long that like getting to see Trent in this moment with one of the biggest names in wrestling to go nearly to the time limit to get really, you know, a, a spotlight on him. Uh, I gotta go, uh, Trent, and a close second is uh, Anna Jay's butt. Wow, I hope your girlfriend can hear you. We I got a I damn near got a three-way tie, but I won't do that. But there were three segments that I've watched a couple of times. Um, but I will say I go Lance Archer versus Marco Stunt because I feel they really solidified in ring a this new dominant wrestler coming in. Jake, this next promo beforehand, awesome too. If you if you just watch one thing, it's hard to not say that, but the match itself, it just, it, it, it re, it reinvigorated the squash match to me. Nice. Nice. And you, you hate squash and eggplant. Oh, get him out of here. Cover him in Parmesan cheese if you got it, but fuck you squash and eggplant. He eats raw pumpkins though. It's very bizarre. You goddamn right. That gives me your powers. Uh, on the other side oh. of the Wednesday night wars, one, one, NXT, one, one, one it was such a good it was such a good thing, but I forgot to bring this up earlier. Jake, I'm so sorry. I apologize for the clunkiness of that, but I wanted to bring up one thing from last week to 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 uh correct. Matt Hardy corrected it for everyone. So the teleportation, quote unquote, last week, um, throughout the building or two weeks ago, Matt Hardy and Vanguard One had a sit down and a laugh because they were talking about how he fooled Jericho with Vanguard One projecting holograms of Matt Hardy all throughout the arena. So any head movement you saw, you're correct. It was all meant to be because those were holograms. I, that does not fix the problem in any way, shape, or form. Yes, it does. <laughs> At all. That's still, yes, it does. The problem is still there. It does. The problem is no, that because he's Chris turning Jericho his head because there's something teleports. actual there. Anyway, Sam Roberts... Boo! <laughs> um, <laughs> Sam Roberts uh, joined the announce team for this episode of NXT, which is the first of the Here Are Your Takeover matches NXT episodes. Um, and <laughs> man, the second the show started, like I don't dislike Sam Roberts. I don't. I don't. I don't dislike him at all. I I enjoy a lot of his commentary. I think that. He is a fun character, and I like that he he seemingly speaks his mind within the confines of being a WWE employee. Um, he knows how to have fun out there, but I just... Listen, I know he can't control this. It's not his fault. He's just born with this. His voice is not an enjoyable tone for a commentary spot, and it just pierces through your TV speakers. <laughs> Alexandra was like, I can't listen to this. I just got up and left the room. I think it would be if he played the role right, and I don't think he's playing the role with the voice. Okay, okay, that's fair. You think he needs to be? If he's, you know, be be a snarky New York guy who's a know it all that's never stepped in the ring. Just fucking be that. 
Like he sat there and he asked a bunch of questions and he had some moments here and there where he's looking at a heel character and going like, oh yeah, well see this person, they, they belong here and this person acts like they want to be here. It's like, yeah, keep going. Be, we know you're annoying, but let us not detract from this guy's so annoying. It's making me hate him because what he's saying is right. Or he believes he's right. And I wish someone would shut him up. Right. Right. Yeah. I did. I, mean, I, I sat felt through like, fucking I felt Vicky like Tom Guerrero didn't know forever. how to play off of him. Uh, super well. I felt like Tom seemed a little confused by him at some points <laughs> as far as how to continue a conversation with things that are like not normally said at the commentary table kind of vibe. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, there there were a few moments where, where Tom like picked picked the ball up that I was like, oh, that was good. Yeah. Like, because Sam mm-hmm. said something that you can tell he was struggling for a word. It's like me on this show or any show or just no show when I'm speaking generally where I'm struggling to find the right word or struggling to find the right phrase and it doesn't quite come out the way you want it to, um, Tom would catch those and be like, and hey, I'm going to pick that up for you and make it about what is happening in the ring now. <laughs> and I was like, good job, Phillips. But yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, the tone is one thing, but I, I did like that he was saying things that maybe aren't just so typical, uh, just fodder for the commentary table. He was bringing something different for it being his first time really doing it on, on network, at least, uh, like that. It was I felt like he handled it pretty well. I agree, Dale. I also miss Corey Graves. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Is he sick or, or he just isn't traveling? I assume him and Carmella are just smart. They're like, look, we have each other. We're okay. I think they have bowed out. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've literally just like taken a bow and slowly walked backwards, Phil's facing the ground. <laughs> And they just grab some canned food along the way. We'll just take these and just step into the shadows. Well, each each person that uh, doesn't come in is one step closer for Johnny to get in and do something fun. That's true. That is very very true. Yeah, that was so. sort of that was my biggest gripe with Sam Roberts was like, yeah, you could add Johnny in there, but as I mentioned, I don't know if it was the pre-show or earlier the show, it was all blended together. But I do feel like. Uh, Johnny is a play-by-play guy, not a color guy for WWE. So maybe it makes sense why he wasn't there, but you know. Well, and and I mean, obviously, I love Johnny. I think he is shockingly amazing at the commentary table, but Roberts has been there for a lot longer. So if there was like a request or something, maybe like, hey, here, remember you said you wanted to do this? Now you get to do it. Take it. <laughs> right, right. True. Um, well, we got the uh the gauntlet match for the what did you call it last week the the losers the losers last chance gauntlet gauntlet match for the that's right number one contendership match for the, it's like All there's of lots of layers losers. to this it's very layered boy i felt bad for caden carter when they brought her out because it's like well i just watched raw and don't don't acknowledge what happened with her and Oscar. Oh, she fought Oscar recently on Raw and was fucking brutally beaten. Like, oh, okay, well, I don't think she stands a chance here on this show. Then, yeah, man, they they have not. Uh, I, I and this might just be because usually WWE is good about this so much so that it's kind of annoying where they're constantly mentioning what's happening on every other show to the point where you're like, all right, yeah, we we watch those. We don't need to recap, but. I'm wondering if maybe the fact that these were recorded very much out of order is part of the reason for that, but I don't know. In any case, man, they must like Shotzi Blackheart because they made her look great in this gauntlet match. And that was, uh, I mean, she she got to be in the actual Royal Rumble this year, but also right before that, she, wa- she was the one in the Battle Royal to throw Shayna Baszler out for that. Right, uh, right. So I think I think they've been giving her a nice little, you know, I, I, guess, I guess it's a slow burn, but she hasn't been there that long. I, they, they definitely right. are. To me, this is how you build somebody. Yeah. And, you know, I have to say, I have not really cared about her till this performance, uh, but I think she definitely has what it takes in between the bells. And uh, if they could make me give two shits about her character, then I think maybe I would end up really liking her. Um there's some is, stuff she is does she that, tank girl is that is that what it is I don't yeah I mean that's what she was or what she was trying to be but I I don't know what just make make it something make me care because she's she does some things that I think are really fun that 
She did that running knee into the corner and then into the DDT. She did like essentially what like what Punk used to do with the running knee into the bulldog. But instead of turning his back and grabbing their head, she stayed facing forward, grabbed their head and then just dropped down for DDT and the, the, like off the turnbuckle. Like there's some really fun little moments in there where she puts together like really interesting series of moves that I dig. But ultimately, I just go, yeah, OK, cool. There's lots of girls with cra- crazy colors hair, though, in wrestling. Why? Why should I care more about this person than other people? But. I mean, they let her run roughshod across the rest of the roster. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have very many positive things to say about this. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll keep it brief. Like the the submission move alone, I'm like, that's just silly. It doesn't that doesn't doesn't look effective. No way would anybody use that. It's not a thing. And for the people to tap out, also looks it's so, so silly. This turkey with their arms flapping in the wings just trying to tap anything, but their hands just sort of jitter. Like, yeah, I don't know. I was happy to see Dakota Kai won the whole thing. I will say that. Yeah. Which was, which was kind of my prediction last week. I feel like she was the best positioned to do it as the heel with the, the muscle, which, you know, came into play as anticipated. I, uh, I, I had to skip all programs last week. And, uh, so I didn't really even know who was coming into this match. Um, so I was, I was really excited for Shotzi. And then when you get to Dakota, you're like, oh, well, obviously, I mean, if <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Maybe yeah. she's going to be the one. But that was a uh, that was super great. I, I thought and and I also was glad Dakota won. But yeah, what a what a great moment for Shotzi. Uh, yeah, agreed. Um, we also saw our, kind of out of order, but we saw earlier in the evening Velveteen Dream versus Bobby Fish and uh Alexandra thought Velveteen was wrestling in purple latex gloves because of the gloves he wears. And uh, I loved that she went like, oh, look, he's wrestling. That's so good. Like the idea that when you're actually wrestling a human being and just like rubbing your bodies together and shoving your faces everywhere, that like the rubber gloves would be helpful to you in preventing the spread of coronavirus. That made me laugh. Sure. You you sound like you're really sweet together. Yeah, we're adorable. (laughs) Um, we also saw, <laughs> I like this other girl's butt. My girlfriend thinks gloves will help in wrestling. She dumb. We also saw, uh, Malcolm Blivens, Blippins, Blippers, all the question marks that Scott wrote on the breakdown. I don't know how they, 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 they got to write these fucking names out because they're all nonsense Blivins. names. So I can't, I don't know what he's saying. I wrote down my Malcolm Blippins introducing Rinku and Sarah as the Hindu share with Blippins Enterprises. What the fuck are all the names? Write them down. Write them down. Why did they have to tell us so much information all at once? That was my only real question. Well, again, and from last week when it's like, I'm going to introduce you, but we haven't figured out everyone's names yet. So I'll be back next week with way too much shit for you. Um, yeah, well, Malcolm Bivens, which is the name, which I had no problem hearing, although I've, he's been on TV a couple times. You so knew the I'm character enough with it. Um, you knew the character. That's why, but he clearly, he clearly went to the, uh, Kevin Nash as Oz school of crazy eyes because good God, dude, let's bring it down a notch. Just a lot of eyeballs, a lot of eyes. Just do, just do one of them. I'd say. Yeah, yeah exactly. If you can do that. Hey, one eyebrow made the rock famous. Maybe uh maybe it'll work for you if you just do one crazy eye. Can you do one crazy eye? It's hard. I'm trying right now. It's like ah. That's why you're make- not part of Blippin's Enterprise business. <laughs> uh Blippin sounds like a uh like a BBC children's program. It's like like tune in to Blippins. Well, I was going to guess it was I was going to guess it was like a Dunder Dunder Mifflin uh competitor. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Blippin's Paper Company. <laughs> Great. Um, we also got the first of our takeover matches. Uh, and you can tell because they put the logo on the screen, you guys. Uh, Damian Priest versus Dominic Dajakovic versus Keith Lee for the North American Championship. And uh, this title has had, like, it, the this title has felt really special to me because they've put it on a pedestal with incredible matches and man, they gave this match like 12 minutes and four of them were introductions that don't work 
when there's no audience there. Um, and uh, I was disappointed. I think that Priest, who I still don't see anything special about, I think Priest dragged this this bout down. That's Sam Roberts' favorite. You bite your tongue. I don't know. I love Keith Lee. I, I've grown to love him so much. He's an insane... And there were still things in this match that were insane. When he was just doing those like core pickup power bombs, like hitting... Dijakovic with uh, Damian Priest and just like whipping around like he's a freak of nature Keith Lee the guy is such an insane athlete um, and there were still some really fun moments in this match but ultimately I, w- I would have preferred yet yet another one-on-one between Lee and Dijakovic because they're just so fun to me and have such great chemistry I think throwing uh, uh, throwing Priest in here just didn't I, I just don't I don't know there's something about him I just don't care about well get ready for I- more of that because he didn't lose yeah, I was about to say, I, I was surprised that they uh, had Dijkovic take the pen again. I think it's uh, kind of weird to have him constantly be losing in that situation. But I think they yeah. just wanted to have all three of them in there just to say, because they said it about 30 times, I think, <laughs> about how it was the the biggest literally match yeah. that they've had. Yeah, I think that's what it was. But you know what? When there's no, quote, normal size people around at ringside, you can't really tell how big they are. They all just look the same. There's a referee. <laughs> we need scale. Yeah, a referee and a, and a nickel or a quarter. Um, yeah, this was kind of a bummer. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I love this title. I love uh, all the previous matches involving it. And this match was just okay. Uh, and I think a lot of that was we, what we've talked about is that it's not working with the lack of people with the lack of energy in the room it's just it's just not working and it's a real bummer because i love two-thirds of these dudes and i love this title and this was a takeover match that wasn't a takeover match in any shape or form yeah it it, yeah it it, it, kind of made it depressing to watch i felt like i don't know if it's the lighting too where they is there something maybe where they're filming aew where they're able to get better aspects well, to make it not not so noticeable i don't know I, jr's I, there so of course they have better lighting <laughs> need better lighting uh get your better I, lighting i actually like the fact that nxt the nxt was the first to take the tip of like all right let's just not have chairs let's just make it about the ring in the area so i actually like the way that it looks that that's not bug, bugging me it, it's the fact that there's just oh. no sound it's just so quiet it's just too quiet no, I, I'm sorry, but I meant aesthetically speaking, like how they have they have the ring and the then they have the the guys are kind of where the seats are for WWE. Uh, so they would have to like put wrestlers in actual audience seats, and so do, do they think that maybe that makes them look weird, like they're not stars or something? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I have no answers. I mean, they they got Firefly Funhouse puppets and all that kind of shit. Just throw that out there. You know, no people. <laughs> Just weird mascotty things they've had over the years. Put Hacksaw Jim Duggan's two by four out there. Put fucking Ric Flair's robe out there. Just superimpose the crowd from WWF No Mercy on N64 and just make that the crowd. Mm-hmm. That was actually so. I b- um, uh, uh, I think it was King Jerry the King Lawler like went out and said like they should just go sitcom style and just put canned audience response. And uh, and see what that sounds like. And you know what? At this point, I'm willing to try it. <laughs> like, just give it a go. See Maybe what that works. sounds like. That that was SmackDown before it was live. Right. Fair. Um. But you but you saw the audience. So you know, even if they weren't making the sounds, uh, you, you it, it felt more normal, I guess. But I don't know. Anyways, uh, I, or fake. This match next- was. I think it, it it highlights the like the women's match where it's. They have a very choreographed style. They, It's not, a to me, a fluid wrestling match. It doesn't feel like people are really fighting each other. They're just putting someone in a spot to do the next big move. And without the crowd there to show the enthusiasm of like, we like these stunts, it feels super weird to watch. It's like, what are you doing? Are you guys, it looks like you're really practicing stuff. So um, I wish there was more competitive the popular term of these days is grit. So I wish there was more grit involved. So much grit being thrown around. Um, well, with that said, uh, moment, moment of the show. Oh, wait, can we talk about one more thing before we do favorite moment, please? Talk about whatever you want. Okay. I wish they didn't make the NXT competitors 
stupider and stupider each week because we had Zia Lee who was attacked a week or two ago now. And they were saying, who did this to you? What happened? And she's conscious. Her knee hurts, but she never said who it was. And commentary ad- again addressed this week, like she's attacked, but didn't reveal to who it was. And now we've had two kidnappings um, and walking wild who just got out of a match who fought willingly went into the car <laughs> with guys that had no weapons, nothing at all. They had masks and that's not scary. Walking wild comes to the ring in one. Like he just willingly went, okay, I'll go. Uh, I think he actually did say, okay. Right. Was it, yes. All right, or something. Was <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Like, why are their fighters not fighting? Why are they just wimps and like not speaking up for themselves or just going along with stuff? Someone needs to correct this real fast because this is two members of the roster in two weeks. I I figured maybe he um but he trusted them because they were wearing masks. So he's like, well, <laughs> normally this is an odd situation, but we're mask bros, so okay. he's a big, you're he's clearly a big fan corona of the conscious. Quarter. Oh, is that he's like, yeah, sweet AEW, let's go. <laughs> I'll be number eleven. It's just a, a contract, a AW contract dangling from the uh, dashboard to lure them in the van. <laughs> That's all. I, I'd i like to enjoy more of these characters. I don't want to shake my head anymore looking at them going like, ugh, they're all stupid. I I don't get that feeling, but um, I... I I don't know. I'm having trouble watching wrestling overall this uh, past week, so I feel I feel a little begrudging towards all products at the moment. But everybody's trying their best, so I I feel like it's like you got to give props for trying to move forward. But at the same time, when AEW is doing it so different, why not try something different too? If if you feel like, because I guess I just feel like surely people backstage feel something similar and they're trying to figure out what to do you're not stuck in a situation. Everyone is not going to judge you off of what you're doing right now. Cause it's all new to everyone. So I don't know. I just feel like they're maybe afraid to try new stuff, but now is the time because everyone will forgive you for it. I know. I just like to see Zia Lee go, I don't know. They got me from behind or the walking wall go, no, get the hell away from me and punch one of them. <laughs> or do you want to know what it was? It was very I, suspicious. Not I figured much. it out, Scott. Yes. It, the person who attacked her is Malcolm Bivens and his guys, and she just doesn't know what their names are. <laughs> uh, b- 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 uh, uh, Sherry Shari? I don't, I don't know. See, I love it. It's the I perfect it. I think you're right. Um, so I think moment of the show for me, yeah, I don't know. I I, I might just have to go with... I, I have to go with the gauntlet match because it was... Uh, it, it, I like that they showed me something new in Shotzi Blackheart. I may not, uh, you know, be hundred percent invested in her now, but now I'm a little bit more interested. Uh, and so, you know, she did some crazy shit and, uh, there was definitely some fun moments in there that it made me go, okay, she could be really good. So I, I like, I like the idea of liking a new person and getting introduced to a new person. The fact that they made her look good in that match is, uh, it made me feel nice. Yeah. I, I love that match. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to pick a favorite moment, (laughs) but um, (laughs) I I do think Dakota winning that match was, even though it's expected when you added her to that group uh, that will be fighting in that match for the number one contendership, it is quite a match. So I'm, I'm super excited. I just, I just wish that they could get the justice that they all deserve for, for the caliber of matches that they have planned. Favorite moment for me. I got to go Dexter Loomis. That was <laughs> so great. I love the new theme. I love the the look of the screen and him coming out and him being quiet and him having these, you know, Fester-esque moments um, that we, after he wins and devastates uh, Jake Atlas and then the bell rings and he kind of goes back into this quiet, violent uh uh, paralysis. 
I just thought that like they did some really good repackaging with them and like tweaked a couple of things that they probably thought were necessary. And I bummed that it's almost been a year, but fuck, am I excited to see him back? Do you think that uh, there's a little bit of danger with whatever they're going to end up doing with Killer Cross or whatever his name is with some uh, with them just being a little bit too similar? No, I, I I can't imagine so because Killer Cross and Dexter Loomis never felt the same anyway. They're bigger guys. Sure. Um, they de- they have different builds. Um, Alexander would be pleased because Dexter Loomis wears gloves. Killer Cross, I don't think wears gloves. Um, but <laughs> I there's also a different. Um, I, not that I've seen a shit ton of Dexter Loomis promos, but he has a different style in and even in his speaking. So yeah, he's I feel not like as, one will be more monstrous and one will be the quiet killer. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Right on. Well, yeah, I mean, Stokes to see more of Dexter Loomis for sure. And um, I couldn't believe that it had been so long that he had been on TV. They said I, I forget the exact summer. time frame, but it, it was it was shocking how many house shows he because he's all over their social. Uh, you know, when they do do house shows and things, he's wrestling a ton of all those things so i get i get confused on time frame because of those kind of <laughs> but right. um i, I think also, also for jake atlas it was a cool thing to come from uh because he was the kid that was on uh what do they call that when you go undercover undercover boss the celebrity one that stephanie did boss baby <laughs> no undercover boss oh uh. Did you guys? Oh, see was that? that the thing you you? I think you had mentioned it a while back on the show. It was Stephanie McMahon. Is that right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, she went undercover and uh, went to different places um, to hire people for WWE. Uh, but and then he was I he remember. was on that show. I think it's it was almost two years ago at this point. Like it's been a while. Um, but she wasn't very undercover, right? Because it was pretty obvious. Well, I mean, the whole show was a bit of a gimmick, I think. Anyway, so. Oh, okay. I mean, no one's really super undercover, generally speaking, unless it's like, he's bald, but now he's wearing a wig. It's like, okay, well. Also, hey, why is there a camera crew following this random person around? Exactly. (laughs) Um, Very, very undercover when you have seven cameras pointing at you and a fucking boom operator following you around. Super undercover. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But yeah, anyway, long story short, too late. That he was, uh, that was the first time I ever was made aware of him. And I know he was doing, I think, PWG. Uh, but it's cool that, he, again, he's somebody that got to debut during this unusual time. But, I mean, that's, that's a, even from doing that show, that was two years ago. So, I mean, it's, uh, everybody's on weird journeys. For sure. Um, well, speaking of weird journeys, uh, WrestleMania is this weekend, guys. Are you sure? Because it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> um, uh, we, we haven't quite seen the Friday Night Smackdown Go Home show yet, but last week, uh, the 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 train continued. I don't know what metaphor you want to choose for things trudging along. Um, you know, we got a few moments, and uh, man, a, a few moments that made me worry about the the situation of mania. Specifically, being what I the, the aforementioned Elias and Corbin, man, that moment is scary. This is what I was talking about when I said that they can't make movies and they couldn't do the ripoff of the final deletion uh, and all this stuff like WWE when they get overly produced and they get a lot of extra camera angles to try to do stuff like this. It occasionally works, and then oftentimes it's what we saw with Elias and Corbin. Yeah. Where it's dumb. It comes off hokey. And and way too serious. It's like, d- so Corbin just killed a dude? Okay. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Well, you know, and I, this I had is this, not this. I had this. This same, is not Champa and Gargano. This is not Edge and Orton. What the fuck? He did a song. Yeah. And well, it's also my issue. And I, I had the same problem with Raw, which we'll talk about is like. And. and it's just too fucking quiet. Even when people are on commentary, it's too quiet. When Shayna attacked uh, Becky on Raw, like commentary sitting right there and they're not saying a word. And that's sort of like, yeah. that's sort of like creepy, take this very seriously moment works when you're getting the reaction of an audience in the, 
in the arena booing or, or whatever. So I don't mind it. There are times where I've complimented commentary for not saying a word previously on this program because something happened at the end of Raw and they just were silent because it felt like a big deal and it was better to have it quiet. But that's because the audience is there and you're feeding off of that energy in the room, that sort of like, oh shit, energy. But when you're just watching something happen with nobody reacting and people just standing around, uh, it feels like a soap opera. It feels like a legitimate like soap opera where it's just awkward. But even with a soap opera, there'd be some fucking music. So you know what? Here, here's here's what was wrong. Here's here's really what was wrong. So there's three major attacks, right? Three 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 things that we saw, two of which were stone cold silent, and one was the biggest deal in the world. So let's look at them. Elias and Corbin. Corbin murders Elias, and everyone's like, "Hey, come on, just just get, get out of here, will you? Just that was shame on you." And the quietly checking on Elias, and then we see, uh. Uh, uh, Shayna take out Becky and same thing like oh that's that's bad you probably gave her a concussion with what you did to her head right there uh, This we'll just let this pass along and then Charlotte just goes and kicks Rhea Ripley just kicks her into the into the you know sliding w- wall there and Adam Pierce goes out and loses his fucking mind on her he brings all the intensity that the other segments needed but this one was like, hey, hey, you stop it. Get the hell out of here. You stop it right now. And Charlotte's like, all right, I will. Before anything got major. And I feel like Adam Pierce needed to be in the other two segments when all the other people needed to be in this segment. It's funny. I didn't think of it that way, but neither you mentioned it. it, it absolutely. It, it was. <laughs> but he, the problem is, is that he didn't realize that the other ones didn't bring it. So <laughs> it unfortunately made him stand out like, oh, God, this guy really loses his mind as opposed to like <laughs> the other ones being like, oh, well, I guess he's OK because he fell from like three floors or maybe 30. It's hard to tell from the angle. <laughs> I wish it was so but, quiet. You could hear staff members going like, whatever. It's all fake anyway. He's fine. <laughs> oh, geez. Why did they add a sound effect to it? That was that was the only thing I didn't understand. Ugh. It sounded God. like it sounded like the fucking Power Rangers. That like whoosh, whoosh, like every time they move their fucking arm. Yeah. No no good. No good at all. And then th- throw a stake on the pavement. That'll be the sound of Elias hitting the ground. Great, we got it. Yeah. This was uh <laughs> again, uh, come on WWE you've got an opportunity here to do something really unique and spectacular and fun and do it. Well, you have the resources. We believe in you. Don't give us this shit come Saturday and Sunday, please. I'm begging you. Um, uh, here's a, that's like two days from now. I mean, it's it's, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, A shining light though on SmackDown. Let's talk about some good fucking drew Gulak versus Shinsuke Nakamura. This was great. And again, you had a couple people at ringside. You had a little bit of energy, which, changes everything yeah this was a much better match for sure i agree i love this match uh, uh, for for the night's givings i felt like this is definitely the most uh exciting and, and even having wrestlemania implications yeah this was this made the most sense to do on a show like this on a in a on a week like this um this is definitely my moment of the night um just if you're going to watch one thing from smackdown this is the only thing worth watching in my opinion and uh, God, they're they're just so good, and I love Gulak getting this opportunity, and I and I love that it's all because Brian legitimately just loves him and thinks that he's incredibly talented and thinks he's great at what he does. Like, this is everything I love about pro wrestling is like working together and pushing people forward and making people better. And you know, Shinsuke is still doing great work, even though a lot of people feel like he's being underutilized. I don't entirely disagree with that, but still, I mean, the guy's just great, and the two of them together are put on a fantastic uh fantastic show i know we always want to think underutilized as fans but i mean a guy like him has re-signed his contract to stay so i feel like if he's complicit of <laughs> course we should just be fine with it too. well yeah we're all smarts we, we all feel like if somebody doesn't have a world title then they're not they're not being used properly um <laughs> but you know that's what the internet's for uh yeah on the other side of things we got uh, Monday Night Raw, the actual go home show for Monday you Night. You want to do a favorite moment of the show? Sure, Spectre? sure. I was trying to move quickly through it so we didn't have to dwell too much, but go for it. I'd say the Firefly Funhouse was moment of the show for me. 
Um, as much as I enjoyed that match, it's it's still great to see Bray doing something and and responding to the comments of Cena and having the whole wall dedicated to Cena. Yeah. Um, so this felt yeah. like some back and forth. This feels like a feud I can get into, and I, I actually look forward to this match. Yeah, I I hundred percent echo all of that because uh, my, my also my moment of the the night simply because it does get me excited for. WrestleMania, that's definitely one of the highlights of the 16 plus matches <laughs> on the card that I am really, you know, and maybe it'll be like when a terrible accident happens and you have to watch. I, I feel like it's going to be good, good or bad, good. But either way, I feel like it's going to be a standout. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely going to be one of those ones that if you don't watch live, you're going to look for afterwards. You're going to be like, all right, who did it? Somebody rip this shit and upload it to YouTube before they take it down. Like this is going to be one of those. Like I got to see what the fuck a Firefly Funhouse match is. <laughs> I'm yeah, also confused it, on what a Boneyard match is, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, well, let's talk about the Boneyard match between Mark Calloway and Alan Jones. Um, uh, yeah. Undertaker being kind of bikery, but not really. Um, calls out Alan Jones since we're using real matches. There's some fun moments in there. Like, I didn't hate this Names. promo from Taker. Um, uh, I you know, there's a little bit of fun moments about how like you know, 15 years ago you you were uh, not man enough to come face me and the likes of The Rock and Stone Cold and Edge, and he name drops all of the people from the Attitude Era. Like, this was fun, but also yeah, you know, AJ's right. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. Oh, Taker's right. I loved it that you waited till they all left but me. Yeah. I fucking loved it because this was, I disagree, this was Biker Taker. Great. This okay. wasn't Dead Man Taker. Uh, this is the Taker that I love. This is the three-dimensional one that can actually do shit. This is the one that we needed a couple of weeks ago instead of him grunting and pacing like crazy. He needed a microphone and he needed to talk some shit because the man can talk shit. And it was a solid promo and again, another one where I'm like, great, I want to watch this now because the guy got to be involved in his own feud. Yeah. This is what we've been lacking for, for this whole time. AJ saying stuff, yeah, but let him respond. And he did. And it was great. Yeah, I agree. This is the best that I personally could remember of Taker delivering for promos because it, it just drags so often. It's just such a slog to get through his entire promo unless it's raising a fist. We're just going to be here for a while. And this one, I was actually engaged in super, uh, I felt like it did a super job of delivering on creating some some heat on his side, which was, was sorely lacking. And uh, Taker, you know, tells Styles that he better bring the the OC because he's bringing his unholy trinity. Tri uh, I can say words. Unholy trinity. I almost said trilogy. Um any yeah. speculations of who these other two people are? Oh yeah, tons. All right, let's let's do that. Who do you got? I go with Kane and Sarah. Sarah, Sarah. His, his ex his ex wife. Yeah. His, his former neck tattoo. Because if it was the Holy Trinity, it'd be Michelle McCool. Right. But no, 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 no. We're talking demons here. We're talking the demon Cain and demon Sarah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's not... I, I would have put that last on my list of what you were going to say. <laughs> it was somewhere in the middle for me. <laughs> Mine, mine was Michelle McCool and and Kane. I mean, I, just because there's no other there's no other family of options, and those right. all seem like people that make sense. Unless you're going to throw somebody new, like we had pondered about Alistair Black <laughs> being related a, a couple of weeks ago. Right. Um, otherwise, I don't. You know, I don't know. I don't know what you you do there. So, yeah, so Dale, I, real quick, with if you bring in Michelle McCool, does she have to be a dark version of her? Because we've always seen her in like in pink and stuff, and you know. I mean, it's a uh, boat yard. I don't know. She's she, she wore a lot of blue, I want to say, first of all. And then I also want to <laughs> say that she was the Piggy James character for, for way longer. Uh, the Lay Cool, uh, I only think of her as, as sort of black hearted. <laughs> oh, so wait I a mean, minute. Okay. Maybe it's just Lay Cool. Maybe that's who he's bringing. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> I brought my wife and 
My wife's friend. I'm sorry, I had never caught your name. I apologize. <laughs> Hell hath no fury like lady bullies. <laughs> um, who do you I, think, I, Jake? I feel like Kane is kind of a. It, I think it's more about who is it going to be with Kane? Because it's got to be Kane, right? It's got to be Kane. That's got to be Kane. Um, uh, what if maybe it's Sting? Just because it's a fun moment for them to do and for him to show up, and it's if it's a boneyard match. You cut to him like, you know, the the crow on the tombstone and you've got the face paint. I feel like that kind of works. Um, Jake, and they've never met. They they have. They met on a bus once. I don't I don't believe your your lies. It was a this greyhound. isn't the rumor show. This isn't the rumor mill. OK, um, they've never met. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that it's. I think it's. A, for me, it's a safe bet that it's Kane and Sting. Um, because also, if the idea is that it's like they're going up against the club, and you can have an opinion on whether or not they've been successful at this, but they've attempted to make the club look like powerhouse tag team. So it needs to be like big. It needs to be the types of people that the club would be afraid of. Um, so I don't think it's gonna be the fashion police. Um, even though I would love that. I, I have a I have a contender for a runner up here because I feel like they're going to go super special effects heavy during this match. I'm I'm also picturing um, a holographic Paul Bear. Paul Bear, right? I think they would like dip it in the footage and do something where it's like he's there and he's talking to him. Maybe pick some odd promos that people don't know the footage that well. So it seems like holy shit! How did they get this? But something with Kane and Paul Bear would be, you know, a secondary choice to Sarah. Right. And, 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 and I, it, I, <laughs> I think you could still do that, Scott, though, with with uh, just having it as a a spook in the boneyard or something. Right. He doesn't have to be one of the the three. He can just pop up. Um, uh, Well, that just gave me another idea. And that is. What if they're all taker? What if it's like. <laughs> Uh, three faces of foley yeah exactly yep what if it's like this taker who is kind of pseudo american badass um but he still comes out he still they still use the other music um but then there's also like traditional you know flat brim purple gloves taker and then like ministry taker or like three versions of the character that you sort of see throughout maybe that's sort of what they're what they could do as well because if this is all about like you're not facing taker in his prime. Well, guess what? You're facing every taker in every prime, that kind of thing. I don't know. That might be something that's interesting. Uh, you got to go teardrop tattoo taker for me. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's how you know he's fucking dangerous. He killed somebody in prison, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, is that what that is? <laughs> what about Dale, the Yeah, we've been telling you the teardrop tattoo you have, I don't think suits your personality. But, uh oh. Uh... I mean, what other I just wrestlers? I just love sad clowns. What other wrestlers <laughs> fit inside of a boneyard, though? Maybe it's like Papa Shango or the Boogeyman. Uh, La Parka. Maybe it's the Boogeyman. Oh, it's La Parka. He's literally a skeleton. Yeah. Um. Well, in any case, I've thought happened. about this a lot, gentlemen. <laughs> a lot. Um. Well, we did also get some really fun promo work. Uh, from Kevin Owens, from Edge, um, you know, there's still oh, some. Yeah, God, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman is just so good, so good. Uh oh, and let's not forget uh, SmackDown's promo work from Tamina, because my God, she she said all of her words. <laughs> good no old comment. Tamina. I. <laughs> they 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 were pretty funny about her leaving the ring though I, I will have to say like oh good to see you, you look great <laughs> right right um well, i would i would have killed for her to to uh, instead her, that she calls an audible and her line she does like three different little head tilts as she said it she and she says i don't remember my lines and then she kicks him in the and face. then starts yeah she punches herself I don't know what I'm saying. They just make her the, <laughs> the character from Anchorman for Steve Carell. <laughs> yeah. Loud noises. Um, Tamina uh, Tamland. Moment of the show for Raw for me is probably 
It's probably the Edge promo, just because I just love him and he's just doing great work and he knows how to connect in such a great way. I love that they didn't do it in the ring. They didn't do it on the ramp like they did the other people's. They tried to mm-hmm. use the performance center facilities and put him in a dark alley somewhere behind <laughs> behind the entrance or something. But this was just great. And, you know, as far as delivering the message, I think Edge and Orton have done the best for their entire program since Rumble. I, I'd say a close contention uh, is also Heyman, Lesnar, and, and Drew. With yeah. as limited TV time as they've had in this past little bit, I think they've also maintained as much as they could the whole time. And it's still pretty much up there. I, I, I agree. Edge and Orton are, are number one, uh, but this is a this is a very close second. Yeah, they didn't I don't think that they they didn't make me care enough right after the rumble. They had a couple there was like three weeks there where they were just having Drew be kind of goofy. And, and it took a few weeks for, for him to come out and claim more Brock for me to go, okay, we're on. Um, I remember Mickey Bell left a, a, a hotline call where he kind of uh, specified that sentiment. That, like it, For a while there, it was like, oh, Drew was so excited that he run the Rumble. And then we were sort of like, oh, but now we don't care about him again. And then it took us a while for us to care. And oh my God, that if you didn't see the video, they did this like movie trailer of him training in Scotland and it was so epic and so awesome. I loved every second of this. It was gorgeous. It looked so good. This to me was so fun. That that little segment, I don't even know if it aired on TV. It didn't air on my versions of uh, of Raw and or SmackDown. But I saw it no. on, tw- on Instagram or uh, Twitter rather. And oh, it's so good. It got me so pumped for everything Drew McIntyre. I just want this character. I want this crazy Highlands warrior being trained by some old man. Uh, and super inspired by Rocky. Like they were clearly just doing a Rocky montage, but it was so good. Did Vanguard one shoot it? No, it was shot way better. Oh, then I don't care for it. <laughs> um, it was, it was gorgeous. This looked like some fucking Lord of the Rings shit. It was shot so well. They clearly brought in like a, an actual, you know, production team, you know, like a film production team. It, it looked just as good as anything you're seeing come out of any trailers anywhere. It was gorgeous. Uh, I'd say moment of the show for me was Undertaker's promo. That's that's everything I want out of Undertaker, and I finally got it. I just had to wait years. <laughs> See, you hung in there, and there's a valuable lesson in that, Scotty. Yeah, he finally talks about TNA. Hooray! He did it. <laughs> uh, my favorite moment is, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I for me, it's kind of um. <laughs> From the perspective of the of this person, not necessarily for me, but how cool uh, must it be for Austin Theory to be going into WrestleMania? Awesome, uh, just ra- like just so randomly. Like I also I have to say that Andrade might have. We say we make fun of Samoa Joe's WrestleMania luck, but Andrade might have the worst overall pay per view luck. I feel <laughs> of just yeah. like never quite That's true. being on the card. Um. But how cool for it for Austin Theory to just run, whine, you know, you just never know. Just do as you do, and you might be going to WrestleMania. That's yeah. got to be so cool. And he's great, and he worked really well with Angel Garza. Um, I, I loved, so. I loved him and Zelina. I love that Zelina's like, oh, he's another client of mine. Like I go out and I find the best. I also like it that it's not just oh, okay, we have a Hispanic wrestler, let's put them with Zelina. I enjoy that. There's that's not a thing because WWE loves to do that. Um, but man, this this is just I, I'm so stoked for Austin Theory. And again, I don't I don't really care a ton about him as a character yet. I don't really have much to grasp on. They haven't really he's been, hasn't been on TV. But I just love the fact that you've got two guys who are kind of brand new, who are future talents getting a WrestleMania spot. Yeah, you can put an asterisk next to the WrestleMania spot they're getting, but still And I do. Yeah. Um, and it's a fair asterisk for sure, but yeah, it's 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 both good and bad. Like it's it's nice that these guys get these opportunities, but then there's how many other people on the roster that aren't involved or don't get to get that spot um, that have been there, and then it also muddles the shows more. It's like he was on this show, now he's on this show too, yep. and we're just adding more because that's we're just going to keep adding more. That's what we're doing more. Um, well, speaking of more WrestleMania. Too big for two nights and too big for Raymond James Stadium. Uh, 16 advertised matches right now over the course of the two nights. A few weeks ago, 
they had advertised what was going to happen on Saturday and what was going to happen on Sunday. And that is now out the window. They've gotten rid of that. So it's just 16 matches and we don't know what's happening on what nights. Um, uh, we do filler, a lot of filler. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, Elias versus King Corbin. Great. Uh, they're gonna <laughs> Otis. I was just going to move on from there. What are you going to say, Dale? Uh, do you think they're going to do the pre-show game or are they just going to have everything just be WrestleMania? I mean, I feel like you, I mean, the, what's the difference between the pre-show? I guess what's the difference between the pre-show and the ring remain anyway, but they might do the pre-show just to try to get people to buy it. Like they still do the pre-show live on YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I would imagine Stanford, Connecticut, they're shooting in the studio. Yeah. Uh, and you throw our truth and one or two other people in there doing some 24 seven title stuff. And then a bunch of video packages. It's like, that's what I imagine the pre-show to mania would be this year. But no, none of these matches on it because this definitely screams pre-show match to me. No. Yeah, we'll see. I think they're throwing all of this shit on the show because um, they don't. What other footage are they going to throw in there that they normally do? Like, oh, we went to Tampa and we went and helped out these kids and we did these seminars. Like, no, you didn't. None of this happened. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. How many like, oh, WrestleMania week has been incredible. Like how many of those packages are just gone now? Like. When you don't get it, when WrestleMania comes to a town, we take over for a full week of exciting things and meeting the fans and like all of those packages that we're used to happening a Mania weekend. We're just not going to get at anything. We're not going to get all the recaps from the the Hall of Fame. We're not going to get yeah, recaps from Takeover. The recaps aside, it is like heartbreaking. Like I, I, I mean, you obviously can't plan anything, but to have to go through. If this was like a month earlier, they could have really dodged a bullet. <laughs> you know, yeah. it just really, it really yeah. freaking sucks. It, it really does. It sucks. But um, in any case, the next uh, match that sucks. Hopefully this doesn't suck for Otis. Uh, Otis facing Dolph Ziggler on the uh, uh, grandest, no audience stage of them all. As, uh, as Tucker and uh, Ruder in the back going, well, fuck both of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know came all this I, way for nothing i, I really like, do hope we, that they're at ringside we, at least because that's what we need we need people at ringside making sounds yeah I, I i still don't understand this this feud like i know they planted some seeds of like look ziggler's talking with sonia deville so they're doing something's like yeah her uh, mandy's friend went I don't like that guy who she's gonna go out with i think he's a scary creep and uh, i think she'd be better off with you and Dolph is a guy who went out with her and everything seems fine. They're going to have to add some like huge twist to go like, see Dolph's evil. Yeah. Otherwise, he's just a guy that stands up for himself. And Otis is a fucking murderer in disguise. Like it's it in no way screams that Otis is a good guy here. I'm just rooting for Dolph. Um, We've got Alistair Black versus Bobby Lashley. Uh, for some uh, reason, correction. Why? why where? Correction. Why? Where? The and first why? time ever. I mean, it's a lot of. They these. keep saying that. They keep saying why? that. This is the first time ever for these two. Why? You know, not Rusev. I mean, I get why None they that. do that. You can only do that once, so you might as well try to bank on it, make people care and about something. I guess. I just, I'm no. desperately hoping this is just like, yeah, let's give Alistair Black a win over Bobby Lashley so that we can keep him a threat because he's in the back right now. He's a s second thought, but you know, we talked about earlier. We feel like everybody's underutilized, but it, I, I would much, much rather Alistair Black in this match beating Bobby Lashley that nobody really cares about versus instead of him versus Goldberg losing, you know, like uh, let me, I'm, I'm at least he's in the company getting wins and slowly climbing a ladder. I'll, I'll, I'll take that over the alternative personally. This is just a raw match yeah. on a quote unquote WrestleMania. Like this just feels like garbage. Agreed. It's it was making a sandwich break. Right. Well, the rest of the matches are all title matches or, or big stories. Uh, those three seem like the three that are, that I would cut from the card if I would to make this card shorter or throw in the pre-show. But uh, we've got or a day shorter or what or a day shorter. 
Sure. Uh, Cena versus the Fiend in a Firefly Funhouse match. I mean, th- we said we said it already, but this this match is is my most exciting WrestleMania match that I'm looking forward to. Um, but also, if Bray doesn't come, I don't know how I don't understand anything about this, but I feel like Bray has some comeuppance with Cena, and so I don't I don't see how Cena goes into a funhouse match and doesn't lose. But I don't even know if we're gonna have a winner. Like, where we don't need, what is this? You know what? You might be right. They I, get match out of there. This is just yeah. Cena versus Fiend in the Firefly Funhouse. Let's just call it that. No, 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 no. Let's let's change it again. Cena's a big actor in Hollywood now. This is a short film he's doing with some friends that he knew back in the day. Ooh. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, good on good on him. If that if that's the case, that's a way to take a weird situation and do something fun with it. Yeah, I'm hoping this uh resurrects the See No Evil franchise and maybe that we get some spin-off of Jacob Goodnight's a uh, long lost brother. And that'll be John Cena because he'll have done this horror match. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Bray. You're going to give it to Cena? Yeah. He's he's too expensive for WWE to do a movie nowadays. Uh, he's making that fast true. money. Yeah. <laughs> he's making well, the big well, not five really. studio money. Um, I do think that the, the this is also probably one of the things I'm looking forward to the most just because it's going to be unique and weird and I want to see it. Like you said, Dale, it's either going to be a train wreck or it's going to be really fun. And uh, I look forward to seeing how like the cast of the Firefly Funhouse is involved. I want to see Ramblin' Rabbit and John Cena have a spot together. I want to see all these silly moments. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the Sister Abigail doll that's increasingly looking like Paige. Um, I think this, think this will be fun. Question mark, I hope. And they'll be committed. Like These two will bring everything to it as weird as or shitty as it it could be on paper i think they'll make it better no matter what true true mm-hmm. um we have becky lynch versus Shayna baszler for the raw women's title we're not so feel, are we predicting winners in any of these by the way no, we, we just we're, we're, if you care if you care to sure okay okay I feel like i'm a dying breed of uh becky lynch fans but i i still super i still super love her and this particular build has just been so bizarre. And I don't know why I don't like it. I can't put my finger quite on it because I don't. I, it's not that I dislike them selling Shayna as a beast. I think you don't have a lot of options, first of all. And they also love a MMA person coming in and being like, you know, the one to the, the one like, oh, they come from something professional. Yeah. It isn't enough, though. What, they, what they've been able to do, it, it felt forced rather than natural and i can't put my finger on why my thoughts is that the reason why i liked shayna was because she always because she was a dominant force but she wasn't goldberg she wasn't like three second match she she put on incredible performances and she seemingly came out of nowhere they treated her like she was a badass fighter but she did so in matches against women who also were incredible threats to her. So much so that she almost got beat time and time again, but she always found a way. And then when she comes up to the main roster, they just let her essentially squash everything and everybody. And they're, what they're, they haven't, they have not showed us one clip of their Survivor Series match. How have you not done that? These two women have met before in a match and you haven't showed it to us. You, all you've showed us is her biting the back of her neck and beating people in an elimination chamber that was wildly boring. Um, like the things that we enjoyed about Shayna Baszler, I think are gone because now there's now she's just Lady Goldberg, and it, to me that's not interesting. That that does that isn't a character that I care about, especially up against Becky Lynch. That's just my two cents. For, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure Lady Goldberg is an album from the '70s, but I, I can't put my finger on it. From what band? And for the Velveteen Dream, and for a guy that didn't watch WCW or like Goldberg, I think your comparison to Goldberg is way off base. Uh, sure. I wish she were Lady Goldberg, but she's sooner a member of the Brood right now. I, I agree. Um, like I, I agree with the assessment of everything she was in NXT before being a hard nosed competitor, fighting, being a, a fighting champion is one thing compared to the main roster and this caricature in the nineties of what a fucking cage fighter is 
Like they don't know. They, they, they don't even look to Brock and go, Oh yeah, we should just kind of mirror that because that's what he is too. Um, the, the, she, Shane has gotten so weird that it kind of muddles what Becky is. And I, I see Shana walking away with this, but it's a shame that Shana or others involved don't stick up for a simpler idea of what she should be. Cause Goldberg was all of this before anybody. Goldberg was the pseudo mixed martial artists fighting in a professional wrestling ring, doing these different moves that no one had ever seen before. Um, and it was exciting and it was quick. And since no one else knew how to fight it, he beat them quickly. Um, so I don't know. I think the match will be far better than the build, but it's, it's a shame of what's kind of happened with all of them. And of course, Shane is going to find you after you stand there for an hour watching your match. Of course she found you in the building and came (laughs) choke you out. Um, so, uh, uh, speaking of which, let's just jump ahead to that. Uh, question mark versus Goldberg for the Universal Title match. Um, any speculations of to who is going to be Roman Reigns' replacement for the Universal Title match? Only who I want. I have no idea who would actually who they, who they're going to choose. I would do some retconning real quick and have it be Kofi Kingston. Yeah, I, yeah. I do a Kofi Mania too. And just run with Kofi and then run with Kofi and uh, Roman down the line. Um, and and either New Day fights twice that night or they just give up the spot. And Big E, there's maybe some contention there. Like he built some story of like, hey, we're going to win the tag team titles again. Xavier's out. You're going after this? What the hell, man? Beautiful. It, I mean, that shit writes itself. That would be the best case scenario. <laughs> I don't think that's what we're going to get. But boy, would I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly... I. I Braun Strowman is a possibility, I think, for them to throw him in here. There's not a lot of big names. There's not a lot of big names that aren't already on this card. Um, I'm also thinking like that they might just bring someone up from NXT that they want to build and just let Goldberg kind of beat them in a somewhat competitive match. I could see them throwing Keith Lee in this match out of nowhere and making it a non-title match, maybe. I I don't know. It's, It's all... A little unfortunate. I think Kofi's the best case scenario. I don't know. You know what? Hey, the worst case scenario. Throw throw William Regal in there. Let William Regal be like, you know what? I'm going to give you another eight minutes. Let's see how you can go, Goldberg. And let's see how much he's improved since WCW. That that's a pretty likely scenario. I think (laughs) I I agree with you. There there is no better answer than Kofi to me either i mean that's that is your your 100 percent best option otherwise you have to pull out a legend and i are, you already have a legend so it's like are, are we are it, and what is goldberg's situation here like was he planning on dropping this to whoever like are we picking the next champion it felt or like are that. we just picking someone who's a, a placeholder until roman feels comfortable enough to come back because i don't i don't know how much they're paying bill and how long he would be sticking around yeah, I, I, this mm-hmm. to me felt like Roman's victory. Like this to me felt like a right. guaranteed victory for him. I got a name. I don't. I don't know what's been going on with him. Um, Finn, the first ever Universal Champion who never lost the title. Well, he joined NXT. If you remember, I, I know that. I but I mean, he hasn't fight. been prevalent. He hasn't been on. <laughs> he wanted the, to fight. He wanted to fight Walter, but then everybody lives overseas, and yep. uh, I guess that's just not a thing anymore. So. I mean, if you're looking for a fill-in, you know, that's a possibility. Um, it's just one of those things well, where I do, I do feel like it's going to hurt who's ever stock loses against Goldberg if they are going to keep it on Goldberg because Roman can't win it. All right. Well, I have the answer now that I feel that I know what WWE is going to do because they're going to go for headlines. Are you ready? Because it's going to be fucking awful. Oh, no. Gronk? Yeah. Oh no, Scott. Why? Why, Scotty? Why? Because they gotta make headlines, Dale. In front of no people, Bill Goldberg and Rob Gronkowski kind of fell into each other and then Rob Gronkowski won a thing. Oh, God. Oh, boy. All right, moving on. That. Moving on, uh, please. Uh, we've got Rhea Ripley versus <laughs> Charlotte Flair for the NXT women's title. I mean, I feel like this is a Ripley victory just because I don't think they're going to put the NXT title on Flair. Oh, disagree. 
All they right. give everything to Charlotte Flair. Jesus Christ. You know what? You're right. I, That's I totally think she takes it. Um, I feel like it's also a, a coup to try and get more viewers on uh, on NXT. Right. And I, I think this one is actually a shame because I'm always intrigued when there's no audience. I think there could be a challenge in that for the wrestlers. But I feel this one is actually a shame that this could have been a WrestleMania classic because this would this would have been a a slow crescendo match. This would have yeah. been a snowball. I feel like they would have paced it so differently than all the other matches that it would have been a slow, slow, slow build into this huge, uh, exciting end between these two. And it's just not going to be that way. Yeah. Uh, on, in front of nobody. Yeah, I agree that, that this, this is one of those matches that really grandest stage of them all and a big giant arena, which all those people screaming, like got it calls for it for sure. Um, Even just for NXT as a as a title, I mean, for, yeah. forget Rhea Ripley. It's it sucks that the first time it gets to have proper representation. This is how it goes. Absolutely, it's at the Performance Center. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no. Uh, we've also got Bailey versus Evans versus Tamina versus Naomi versus Banks in an elimination match for the SmackDown Women's uh, title. I think this is a. Sasha Banks victory. I think it comes down to Banks and Bailey in a very obvious way, or Banks eliminates Bailey really early on. Uh, and then maybe that's the story being told. And it comes down to like Banks and Evans, since they really like Evans a lot. Not sure. I wish they would acknowledge that they already eliminated Dana Brooke. <laughs> First eliminated Dana Brooke. What happened? Uh, she got, she's on quarantine for uh, Corona fears. Oh, is that Where's is that called like a, the galaxy uh, a two week vacation with with Dave Batista? Is that what that yeah, is? Probably. <laughs> and Rey Mysterio, because he's joining he's joining her. He's also a quarantine. A real <laughs> Hall of Fame induction. Oh, dear. Um, we already talked a lot about our uh, taker versus AJ Styles in a boneyard match with the uh, aforementioned unholy trinity trinity. God, I can't say that word today. Jeez. Um, and AJ Styles with the OC, uh, I think ambitious, but I feel this one could be the scary one where it's like, oh, none of that turned out. Oh right. no, right. yeah, a agreed. It depends on who this unholy trinity is and what they consider a boneyard match because you can get away with Goofy in the Firefly Funhouse because it's a funhouse, so you can get away with mm -hmm. hokey, hokey cells because. Look at the Bray Wyatt character, not the Fiend, but the Bray Wyatt, like zany. He can do anything. And you go, well, he's a crazy person. But when you're doing a boneyard match, that's serious. That's spooky. Like, that could be really bad. Agreed. But it could also be great. And I hope it is because I like, you know, the parties involved. Um, is, we've a, got is a boneyard a graveyard or, or, or am I confused? Exactly. Yes. Um, uh, Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins without his disciples. Yeah. Murphy ain't having any part of this. AOP mm. is AO. Please get me the hell away from all you sick people. Again, the man, this would be hard, this would hard be to a, be in a faction. This would be such a great mania match. <laughs> this would be such a good WrestleMania match. I, I feel like this one, as much as I love the promos, it's it it definitely suffers from. I feel like I've seen this on Raw for years. Yeah, yeah, um, you're, you're and all wrong. the weeks leading up to it, like they fucking fought endlessly. This is not like MJF and Cody, where it's oh my god, they haven't done anything. I want to see them go at it. I've seen or, them go at it countless times. Or Aleister Black and Bobby Lashley, first time they've ever. never done it. Um. Well, uh, we've got uh, Sami Zayn and Daniel Bryan for the IC title match. Uh, this is another super fun match in theory. I think, you know, the Artist Collective might make this fun along with Gulak. Uh, there's a lot of fun things in here. This could be really great. I feel like they've this, this these duo with their, you know, cohorts have put on the best things in WWE's programming since the no audiences. So I'm hoping that that carries over to a really fun match. I I, I would I would guess that this is the like we're saying for the other ones that are outside able to do anything like a boneyard or a graveyard I guess. <laughs> and uh, this one is the only one that I'm like super stoked for 
uh, for the actual in ring in a ring uh, on the card, just because of what you're saying, where it has extra people there. It will have that AEW kind of vibe where I think everyone's going to be having a lot of fun trying to make this as special as possible between this group of uh, guys. I, I really hope that because this is Sami Zayn's first title defense, yeah. um, his first one-on-one that Sami Zayn is just as Memphis as Memphis can be. Like, I hope he does every Lawler trick in the book, like that. He doesn't want to get in the ring, uses some hand and sanitizer, just goes and stretches like every single thing to be different than a, just a regular one-on-one match in the ring, because we're going to see a number of those that he just builds the anticipation of you want to see Danny Bryan just kick the fuck out of him. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Street Profits versus Theory and Garza for the Raw Tag Titles. Come on now. The Raw Tag Team titles don't mean anything, and we threw together a tag team last minute. So Theory and Garza. I agree. <laughs> uh, man, the Street, Profits so- the Street Profits song is so good, though. Um, Miz and Morrison versus <laughs> The New Day versus The Usos in a ladder match for the SmackDown Tag Titles. Holy shit, this would be such a fun WrestleMania match as well. This could be really fun, but uh, because again, there's lots of people, but there's not a lot of people talking. There's lots of people pretending to be really tired while their friends do ladder spots. So I'm not sure. Yeah, fuck this. No people and no payday to do a crazy ladder match? No. No, 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 no. No way. I can't. Uh, man, I can't even imagine doing that. Th- that just seems like the worst case scenario for all involved. What if- and this was the match. This was the match that apparently uh, threw off Roman Reigns because I think, or maybe it was a SmackDown prior. I, I don't know of of the rumor of Miz arriving not feeling well. Oh, this, this was all. This was all kind of uh, uh, the the boiling over point from that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, this is going to be weird and scary. It could be really fun, but I don't know what it's going to look like. Um. In any case, I think Miz and Morrison still come out with those titles. Uh, But man, it would be great if uh, Kofi participated in a different match instead. Agreed. It can just be the Usos, and I'm sorry for Big E, but I don't know. Like, uh, Yeah, but I agree. Miz and Morrison, I feel, would walk away from this as champs. Uh, Especially if you're swapping the other one. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kabuki Warriors versus Bliss and Cross for the women's tag titles. I mean... I I I don't care. This is not. This is this is such a weird mishmash of like. Hey, so look, something's kind of happening. No, it's not, and it doesn't matter. And the the women's tag team titles haven't been defended in so long. It I whatever they do, it's just like this is another one of those occasions where an audience would maybe kind of make it matter, but it feels like Zack Ryder and Hawkins the year before, where it's like it doesn't really have any difference well, like it's this is so back burner Kyrie sane has not been there to promote this asuka has been doing all of this build up by herself against the other two so this feels once again like an asuka match that Kyrie sane is involved in because she's her tag partner with the title um mm-hmm. so that's sort of that's what i mean i this match on paper is great to me i actually love this match i love all four of these women this could be super fun i think anything that cross does with the Kabuki Warriors is a blast because Kabuki Warriors are fun and weird and so is Cross and Bliss is a great counterpart. I love her mocking uh, Asuka's little dance on SmackDown or whatever it was. Like There's some really fun, cute moments here and some great wrestlers doing great wrestling, but also it's it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it matters, which is unfortunate. Um, but moving on, God, we're almost, we're almost halfway through. Uh, Drew McIntyre <laughs> versus <laughs> WWE champion Brock Lesnar for the WWE title. This is another one where I feel kind of bad about the scenario because all, all signs point to drew and, and just to have this moment, especially for a guy like him, that's been around. I mean, this is, you know, there's no reason to tout what we already know, but it just has got a, I mean, I'm sure it's still great that it's happening, but I just feel bad for the fact that this is how it goes down for him. You know, the only thing that I can see is that Drew wins it in this weird environment. And then that is the 
that's the conversation that Heyman can use as to why he won. You know, like maybe there's something there. There's something about like, this is an asterisk. You won this at WrestleMania with an asterisk. You know, that kind of thing where maybe Heyman can use that to further the promo, you know, further the uh, the program rather going on. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that this match is going to be exciting without an audience because I don't think that Brock suplexing Drew a bunch of times is going to be as exciting without all the audience counting. I think we really get to see Heyman shine during this when yeah. usually he's just some garnish. Um, good, good point, but I yeah. think this is going to be the the most interesting case study <laughs> for wrestling fans since the Montreal screw job. Yeah. Like for years to come. I think I think what'll happen is in the long run they'll they'll try go Drew, but it won't take because there there won't have been the pageantry, there won't have been the crowd to try and make a guy for their title won't work. Um, and there'll be a disconnect and Drew will like, they'll try a couple times here and there and it just won't take. And so all the shoot interviews and everything that comes later on down the line, like Drew's going to be one of those guys where it's like either he rose above it and went somewhere else and got that connection, or it's going to be a sad story if he takes it really to heart and it bums him out because I just don't think it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that because because Heyman is involved, he will find a way to make it work. Um, but uh, you know, we'll we'll see when it happens. Uh, finally, our last match uh, on this card: Edge versus Orion in a last man standing match. In my opinion, the best story going into Mania. Um, the fact that the last man standing match works, it will just feel like a crazy empty arena, especially if they can pass people that work there that are hooting and hollering. You get that like backstage. Come on, come on. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. That kind of stuff. You get the, the ec- like we've seen people battle through the arena and you just hear the weird echo of their own grunts and slaps hitting off of the walls of the hallway. And that will feel like it's kind of normal because we've seen that before. It won't feel out of place, in my opinion. Um, but even on those matches, when we see them on TV, you still hear the audience in the arena. So I don't know. I'm hoping that because of who's involved, they can make this great. I think this one works. I think this one works on all levels. This is probably your actual WrestleMania classic match from the year. Um, I think I I think it'll just be brutal. It'll hopefully be a little bloody and uh, it'll, it'll be, it'll just, it, it's going to work. This one doesn't need the crowd. This one doesn't need all the other stuff. It just has to have the focus on those two and whoever's on commentary, not just not being passively like, and we're going through this and we're doing this. This has to mean the, the, the most of anything and the, the performers will carry it off. Yeah, I, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, not to be a broken record, but I feel like this is another one where I'm like, oh man, to be gone for to be Edge, uh, it just it just sucks. At least he, he at least he got that that uh, you know tingly coming back home pop at the Rumble, I guess. <laughs> but you know this this is the moment that he's been waiting for or picturing in his mind for how long? You know, uh, it's, it was funny when him. you mentioned tingly. For a guy that has neck problems, and it's like at least he got the tingly uh, paralysis. <laughs> he can't. Feeling he that. can't feel his arm anymore. You know that kind of excitement. <laughs> Who's excited for mania? Raise your arm. Oh, uh oh. Uh, well, there you have it. The WrestleMania card uh, over the course of two nights this weekend. Uh, this show has been too big for two hours. Um, we've kind of at our limit, but you guys still want to take a hotline call or two? Sure. All righty. Uh, let's see what the people have to say. What's up, compadres? It's Tim Redbeard from Connecticut. Um, so I was just wanted to say how I've really been interested and in enjoying, for the most part, how the wrestling shows have been without the audience. 
Yeah, I think it's a real good opportunity to just approach it from a different way as a viewer and just to really, I like how it's, you know, it's really more like a TV show now, you know, less like the circus and that whole vibe. Uh, but I, what I wanted to ask is um, if you guys have seen the Dark Side of the Rings um, two-part um, like documentary show on Chris Benoit that came out recently, I think it came out recently. I just watched it. Uh, recently, and oh my god, it's some heavy stuff. Reliving all that and just remembering how emotional I cried so much. Um, I'd love to know what you guys thought of it. Um, please take care, stay healthy, and I'll talk to you next week. Peace. Tim Redbeard, thank you so much for your call. Hope you are doing well and in good spirits in these very bizarre times. Um, I have not seen uh, this Dark Side of the Ring yet. Uh, but I've heard a lot about it. People are raving about how good it is. And it is, uh, it's definitely on my to watch list. Have either of you guys seen it yet? It's on my DVR, but I, I just haven't been in the mental place to watch that episode yet. That I totally get that. Uh, I was waiting to uh, watch it with the family, you know, just gather around the TV, <laughs> have a good old time. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, I don't have Vice. Um, I know it's available to purchase, but that's also a little uh, difficult at the moment. Um, but that was a contender for if I really feel like WrestleMania Night One was not enjoyable to watch, that I might watch something else like that instead. I'm a gigantic Benoit fan. I have always been, always will be, and I know a lot of the story is kind of repeated, but you get a new family perspective on it. So I'm fascinated to watch it because um, I think more of the truth of what his story is needs to be out there. So I'm glad they did this. Yeah, I, you know, it's anything that exposes it in a way that is honest and truthful about the mental health issues and about the other issues involved in this versus just like, oh, we have to write him off because he's a murderer. You know, I feel like that's that's a good thing. And the fact that uh, Chris Jericho is the narrator for it and all these people that are associated uh, with it are people that that knew him very closely that are speaking out for some sometimes the first time I've heard. Uh, so, yeah, I, I look forward to checking it out. And by the way, this is a whole series, not just about Chris Benoit. The next episode they're doing is about New Jack. And uh, so yeah, it's, uh, this aired. is their second season. It's on uh, it's on Vice, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Vice. Yep. Yeah. And of all people, New Jack was ahead of his time because there was a guy that when he wrestled, his theme music kept playing, which is probably something that some of these wrestlers need in their matches now to keep it interesting. Well, there you have it. Hey, this is uh, Stu Hart, and uh, my question is, uh, uh, what's your uh, favorite WrestleMania stage of all the times? And don't forget to watch Stampede Wrestling on the network. Stu Hart, thank you so much. Always so kind of Stu to call us and uh, leave us a question on the hotline. Yeah, I'm glad I don't have to shake his hand, though. I mean, mostly for Corona purposes and not anything else. So uh, favorite WrestleMania stage. It's a pertinent conversation to have on a year when we won't really have a spectacular WrestleMania, a, a grand stage, so to speak. But do you guys have a favorite WrestleMania stage? I have a few, but there's 100. There's one that really comes to mind. What, what what's yours, Dale? Uh, or Orlando, the more recent one with the roller coaster. Oh yeah, that just didn't have phen- phenomenal. At least in in person, it had like a big globe. It almost looked like the Universal Studios globe, right? Yeah, uh, and it just it just was uh, a perfect for background setting sometimes they go in directions like oh we're in texas so it'll be a boot or whatever you know, like, <laughs> okay, <I guess. laughs> a giant led boot <laughs> and, the, and the pyro shoots out but of the i angle. felt like <laughs> i felt like this one was was perfectly uh themed to where we were and just i mean it had to be crazy to build yeah i feel like yeah. They, they've just gotten more insane as the years go on I, I got a piggyback off a of deal with that one when I when I thought about it. What, what sprung to mind was the, was the roller coaster, and I remember sitting there with Dale and just like 
the thing looks awesome. We're kind of hoping any wrestlers were going to be riding it at some point during the show. Um, <laughs> because even to build a, oh, look, this is a roller coaster that doesn't work. That's a, that's incredible. Um, but that one, that one definitely s- stands out without looking at a list. Yeah. I, I love that one. I think I have two. I have, and I don't remember the number of the first one, but I th- it was the one where, uh, where Shane faced Taker. Was it 32? 33 in uh, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, oh yeah. So that makes sense. Texas. Cause it was the one that had a big star hanging over the head, but that wasn't what was cool about it. What was cool mm. was that it had the angular stage that came to a point, like a big arrow facing the ring. And I remember just how cool I thought that looked with the two led boards that sort of went out into the distance on opposite sides. Whereas usually, you know, the stages concave into where the wrestlers come out. But in this v- version, it sort of pointed out to the ring. I just remember that feeling really awesome when people came out having the giant LED board that wasn't just a flat wall, but that was angular pointing at them. Uh, I thought that was just awesome. And you did, they yeah. did all those fun LED shits, but my, f- my favorite. And I, I think, ahead, I think that might've been their one or their first or second uh, time that they were programming the floor. I mean, the ramp. Also, yeah. The LED, the entire floor was an LED board too, which was just super fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but my favorite one hands down is uh is 26 it was hbk2 it was his, his the year that he retired and it it had like what i loved about it is that instead of having the columns that were up around the ring that were vertical they the actual stuff that was over the ring was like a pyramid so it made the ring like i don't know it made it look better it made, you didn't have these giant columns outside of the ring post instead it kind of like went out into the audience which made the ring look cooler and then the stage had that giant LED panel above the wrestlers that sort of pointed down. So it, it like, yeah, it was like a, a giant cube. Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. It was like the corner of a cube. Yeah. It was almost like, a, I guess, like, I guess it was kind of a pyramid ish, but it had that one like slanted LED ramp that came down at the, uh, the, the, the wrestler during their entrances. And it just, I don't know, whenever that camera got really low and that giant LED panel was above them kind of, up into the sky in the distance. Like I remember that was awesome, especially for HBK. Cause I had the, they had HBK in big giant letters on top, like looking down at him. And that to me, I remember, I just loved that ramp and they didn't have the led floor yet, but there was just like, you know, fucking led panels everywhere. The entire thing was just this massive led panel, multimedia chaos with all these different levels. And I, I that to me was my absolute was that, favorite was, one. Jake, Jake, I'm Do you, confused. You said that's the one where HBK retired, but are you talking about Super Showdown? Because he didn't retire there either. He's still an active wrestler, you know. Thank you so much for your calls to the Compadres Hotline, 747-666-5606, 747-666-5606. Hey, it's WrestleMania weekend. Uh, it's a great weekend to call up after you watch Mania and tell us what you thought. What are you angry about? What did you love? What worked? What didn't work? Uh, give us all your thoughts on the Compadres Hotline. Hey, we're stuck at home. We, we, we need to hear from you uh, because we can't see our friends. So make sure you're calling that Compadres hotline. Make sure you are following at Compadres Show on all social media, as well as checking out CompadresShow.com. Click that link to Patreon. Uh, become a patron. Now's the, a great time to become a Patreon Palski. Uh, we need the support more than ever doing these remote shows and uh, tr- kind of doing the best we can to get along here in these very bizarre times. Uh, we've got weekly pre-shows. We've got tons of bonus episodes. If I'm not mistaken, we're gonna be some we're gonna be some pulling some things that were never released from the vault. Isn't that right, Dale? Uh, uh revisiting, yes. Yeah, that's gonna be a good time. Um we've got Yeah, don't pull it in the vault. There's a strict rule against that. All right. <laughs> we've got a bunch of really fantastic different shows from our watch along Wednesdays to our WWE encyclopedias. We've got games like guess that theme or who's on what roster we've got uh, tons tons of stuff there if you are sitting around you're going man i got nothing to do nothing to listen to there are hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of stuff for you available on our patreon go to compadreshow.com click that patreon link so we got to thank our patreon palskis of course abshir jama aj0314 alex pierce Andrea Beeler, Ballista, Brian Collins, Christine, Gavin Provost, 
Gilbert Short, Johan Pena, Joshua Monteith, JP, Masked Llama, Matt Salgado, Matthew Beasley, Michael Beltran, Noe Cruz, Paisley Darts, Pete Garit, Ricardo Rosario, Tim B. Happy Miss, birthday. Tim, <laughs> Tim Redbeard, Tom Hader, Tony Griggs, Ugly Aussie Weed, and Zach Ayafuso. Thank you so much for your continued support. We hope uh, all are well. And uh, yeah, there's more stuff coming your way. Uh, find me on Twitter at Liquid Jake on Instagram at Jake Lloyd. Check out me, you, and 30 other men. Hey, you've got all this compadre show goodness. You've got all the Patreon stuff. There's even more. You can go to meun30.com uh, and check out Alexandra and I as we sit down and watch a Royal Rumble match in real time right alongside you. Alexandra experiencing each of the Royal Rumbles for the first time in a random order. We recently watched 1993. And we did a little bonus episode on the website. It's a website exclusive where we watched the mania that followed in which Yokozuna beat Bret Hart. And then that evil, evil red and yellow man came out um, and stole the spotlight from Bret Hart. Um, It's really fun listening to Alexander's reactions to these ridiculous moments in history. Are you talking about Elias? He's wearing red and yellow now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Must be talking about Elias. (laughs) Uh, you can follow me on The Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter, but mainly I am just staying safe and uh, talking to no one from within six feet like everyone else should be. No, not from within. <laughs> from within six feet is the opposite. From without of six feet. You don't want to be within six feet. That's the opposite of what you want to be doing right now. Oh, no, no, no. It's mostly kissing is what I meant. No! I'm not talking to them. I'm just mostly this kissing. WrestleMania is going to be really bad, you guys. What? Oh, Cody's never going to get that kiss from you. You can find me on social media at Scott Narver uh, because I am a firm believer of physical distancing, not social distancing. Fucking talk to everybody. Just stay the fuck away from each other. But you can find me on there and uh, I'll attempt to watch one of these WrestleManias live. Uh, I don't know if I can endure both. Uh, but it, we'll have some yucks in there. And you know what? God, it makes me feel like I got so much time on my hands. Maybe I should start up another podcast Ah, for another day for another day. Well, there you have it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in, for sticking with us. Uh, we really hope that everybody's doing well. Everybody is safe, being smart, um, being responsible. And hey, uh, it's WrestleMania weekend. It's a, a very weird, weird WrestleMania weekend. There's not a ton of mania involved in it. There will be some wrestling. Uh, I do hope that you still get to enjoy it with your friends remotely. Do some watch parties via Skype or Zoom or whatever the new popular way to communicate is. Uh, Wrestling ultimately is a social activity. We all know each other on this show because of wrestling. We do this show because of wrestling. The best part of wrestling is watching it with friends and enjoying it and talking about it. So uh, celebrate that. Uh, I know it's a weird weekend for Mania and it's going to be a weird Mania. But hey, it's just as fun to talk about how weird it was sometimes uh, than it is to talk about how exciting and expected it all was. So Uh, And with that said, enjoy the rest of your week and uh, we will see you after the showcase of the immortals. I shouldn't laugh at that, but I do. That's entertainment. It's dragon wagon.